Welcome to my basement, everybody. How's everybody doing? Happy Monday. It was uh, an eventful weekend. Um, uh, congrats to uh, the election, the U.S. election finally being over, and uh, Joe Biden is going to be the president of the United States. Uh, so that was the huge thing. Uh, there was also some other huge game news, which we're going to get into uh, in our rundown today. And of course, we're going to be talking about um, powering our dreams. I've got the Xbox Series X here, and I also have the One X right here. Everything is sort of precariously balanced on this rolling cart here. I hope nothing falls down. Well, the One X, One X especially. The Series X stands up just fine. Uh, hopefully I sound all right. Uh, welcome to uh, Mr. Mass Produce 201, who was first. And then Blair Farrell says first with a question mark. Uh, Mike Williams is here. Mike uh, or um, Peter... Uh, uh, Kokosor is here. Kashimoto is here. Wolf says hello. Vin Weasel. I like that name. Hey, guys, what do you think about the Sony deal with Call of Duty? I think it sucks. Uh, the kicks, uh, kicks all the cross-gen uh, titles in their butts. Yes, the uh, it wasn't one of my stories today, but it, it is kind of crappy. That is the... Uh, um, the, the extra perks and the extra experience points. If you pay for the PlayStation uh, 4 or 5 version of Call of Duty, you get a lot of benefits, and it feels a little bit like you pay in that direction, and you are going to be um, much more powerful, which is crazy. Hi there is here. Uncle Jay is here. Um, Zenokai is here. Uh, he might not be the president. That's all still in limbo. <laughs> it looks at him. Uh, it lo it looks with his eyes. I'm pretty sure he's going to be the president. Uh, S uh, Sussy says, Vic, what do you think about PlayStation 5 games being 90 bucks in Canada? Will this kill the video game scene? Hmm. Um, I think the video game industry is quickly moving towards uh, everybody having an, a, a subscription and then being able to sort of download and access all kinds of titles. Maybe not all brand new titles, like what Xbox has been doing with uh, Game Pass. Uh, kudos to uh, Xbox and their aggressive you, you know, machinery to get Xbox, uh, Xbox Game Pass into as many homes as possible. I believe that is the way to counter the high prices because, let's face it, the video game industry the traditional game industry, the one that we all love right here, not enough people play games. We play games, and maybe we sell 120 million um, PlayStation 4s and you know get close to 100 million of other machines and stuff, but that's been kind of true for many console cycles at this point. And meanwhile, the uh, mobile space and the free-to-play space has just completely eaten their lunch. They've gotten billions of people and billions of, you, you know, accesses to content out there. And I think the video game industry needs to take some really big steps because the video game industry, the traditional one, the one where developers, you know, ache and aspire to create this beautiful art that we're all, you, you know, in love with and engaged with and addicted to... Um, it's expensive to make. It's risky because it's all hit driven, just like big Hollywood movies. You spend two hundred million dollars on a game, and you you know you need X number of units sold in order to kind of stay in business. The Avengers is going through some of that right now with Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics. It it uh, Square Enix just this is also not one of my rundowns. So you're getting bonus rundown content right here. Um, the uh, Square Enix just uh, dropped that they're at like I think a sixty million dollar loss, and everybody's kind of tying it at the Avengers. It's a very risky business. So the best way to proceed, just like the movie industry has been proceeding into streaming, look at how important Disney Plus is, especially to to Disney right now. You know, it's to Disney desperately needs people to uh, pick up Disney Plus subscriptions, and if they keep making awesome shows like The Mandalorian, I guarantee that's exactly what's going to happen. But it is crucially important to their whole business right now, and Netflix is worth almost as much or more than Disney, and all they do is uh, you know, deliver streaming entertainment like that, streaming video content. So the video game industry definitely not only wants to have a piece of that pie, but it is really going to help with the overall health of the business. And I think if... You know, traditional players kind of shift their focus and on um, the way that they consume and access this content. Maybe it's a you know you have a subscription and you buy less titles per year, but you get to play more games. Um, and I think that's what's happening. You know, so yeah, ninety bucks. 
uh, for a game in Canada, especially if you factor in all the, the taxes and all that stuff, that's crazy expensive. And a lot of people are going to opt out. But that has been the case for the video game industry since the 80s, guys. You know, when, when I used to buy Atari 2600 games with my paper route money, uh, it was still 60 bucks. You know, it was 60 bucks back then. And uh, so that was just a crazy amount of money. And, uh, you know, the game prices haven't really grown all that much over multiple decades, but the cost has. And what also hasn't correlated is that the install base, the overall sort of capture of people playing games hasn't grown enough. And that's precisely why, you know, that's Stadia's business model. That's what Amazon is getting into with Luna. Facebook is trying to uh, tackle that. That's what xCloud is all about. That's what Game Pass is all about. It is that X number of people out there that are wasting their gaming time on terrible mobile experiences or, and I don't want to throw free to play under the bus. I know a lot of people love that whole scene out there, uh, but I, I think we are all kind of in agreement here that there are way better meteor experiences to spend your time in. If you're going to choose to play video games, there are lots of really incredible titles to play. I know I'm waving my hands around. I'm excited. It's uh, it, there's lots of good things in this Monday. Um, all right. Uh, okay, we got uh, we got a console war happening in here. Vic, what do you say about the Cold War? Uh, what Sony do with the exclusivity uh, boost buys again? Yeah, I'm not I'm not happy with that, Vin Weasel. Um, exclusives in the in the video game industry are a tough. Um, it's a tough nut to crack, right? Like we want companies to juice the value in their experiences and make them cool based on whether you're upgrading to new hardware or deciding on a direction for your hardware or wherever you're kind of placing your money. You want to feel like you're getting the best value. And so there is this constant battle in the game industry, which again makes it, uh, you know, a tough thing for people on the outside to decide, wh wh where do I spend my money? You know, what what horse do I bet on, you know? Um, and I've seen it time and time again, time and time and, uh, again, over and over again uh, for so many years. And I just want, I want there to be a little bit more parity and fairness and more people playing, you know, because ultimately that's what's going to sort of lead to better content. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it sucks. It sucks for all the Xbox players out there, and it sucks for all the PC players. Just as we're sort of cresting and getting into a position of crossplay and you know, kind of sharing an experience, no matter what machine you come, uh, you know, to play this experience on, um, we're doing silly things like saying, "Well, if you buy it here, you get all this bonus stuff, and you're going to be way more powerful," which is nuts. Uh, but you know what? The video game industry is is still figuring things out, and it is a different industry than the movie industry for sure. But listen, we actually do have a rundown. We have uh, some stories to to talk about here, um, and I'm going to get into them, and then I'll catch up with some of the chats. Uh, help me out here because there's quite a few people already in the uh, chat room, and I'm very happy to see all of you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but if you can put questions or comment in all caps it helps me kind of see it all right there or if you want to throw me a super chat that's very sweet too uh but listen let's get into our rundown and we're going to start with something that definitely fires me up and it's uh it's actually xbox related uh it's uh, not yakuza related um necessarily <laughs> uh, but Xbox is uh, getting into the Japanese marketplace. They are uh, definitely looking at picking up, acquiring studios of different sizes, whether they're large or small. I think Bloomberg was the one that reported on this. Uh, the what? What are we looking at? Yakuza is crazy. This is the new Like a Dragon trailer right here. Um, but uh, they. They um, definitely want to uh, not squander the opportunity to grow their market share in Japan. And of course, this is a message that we've heard from Xbox time and again, and they've had very little success in the territory. Um, but, you know, things could change around. And of course, the first company that comes to my mind, and I know this would be crazy to think of, uh, you know, Xbox uh, picking up Sega, but wouldn't that be insane? Wouldn't that just be so 
crazy, especially if they say to the world that they're not really going to lock up Sega's titles exclusively to Xbox, which seems to be what they're talking about. I mean, the other the other huge acquisition that they recently had was uh, Bethesda, and the signs are that you know the Bethesda titles that they've been working on for years um, will be on other platforms and available to players in a lot of different places. So we would expect the same kind of decision around a Sega purchase. And this is just my conjecture. There, you know, I've talked about this and thought about this uh, many times in the past. Um, and one thing that got me kind of fired up again about it was the idea of backwards compatibility uh, because they're so gung-ho on being able to let people play their libraries. And I think it would just be incredible. And I don't even know if it's possible, but I think it would be insane if the Series X was... First of all, they would have to acquire Sega. But if they do, and this huge if... It would be insane if they said, okay, well, you can play your Dreamcast games on the Xbox Series X, or you can play your Saturn games, or whatever, um, which would be enormous and cool and kind of put Sega back in the hardware business in a way, and maybe they could make a, a Dreamcast-flavored Series X. Um, I mean, the mind reels, right? It would be crazy to think about that. Now, of course... Xbox has purchased, Microsoft has purchased Bethesda, and they have a studio. They have uh, the Tango studio that worked on The Evil Within. This is uh, uh, Shinji Mikami and and his incredibly talented group of uh, developers in there. A lot of, um, you know, veterans of survival horror experiences like Resident Evil. And they've got a new game. I forget the name of the game that they're working on right now. You guys will tell me. Um, but they, oh, that's freaky. They've got some stuff that's in the pipeline. So they already have a, uh, an internal studio um, that's based in Japan, and we'll see what that means for this company. So, um, you know, I think this is the right approach. I think that Xbox definitely needs to, uh, you know, think of their footprint all over the world, um, you know, just to, and, you know, the same thing is true for PlayStation saying that they're not abandoning the relationship to the Japanese gaming market. They've had to kind of come out there and say that the uh, the North American consumer isn't their, their main focus. And it can all be, you know, people can be incredibly sensitive about that. And of course, there's so much pride around Sony being a Japanese uh, company that's uh, crafted so many incredible devices, not just PlayStation, over many, many decades. Um, and there's a lot of really vociferous and passionate Japanese gamers that just love PlayStation. So it's important to them to kind of maintain their foothold in, in the Japanese marketplace. And they've recently come out and said that. Um, but I also believe that Xbox needs to do that. And these are all multinational companies um, that are culturally relevant and important in all of these different territories. And Xbox has really had a tough time. They've really struggled in Japan. Uh, it's hard to get software for, uh, you, you know, their... Um, for their hardware because the, a lot of the retailers just watch it sit on on shelves for a long time. And, and when you go through the, the the Japanese game stores, you'll see Xbox in there, but it's kind of buried behind all the Nintendo and Sony stuff that's out there. Let's see, we got Sussy. We've got a question. Vic, I've been thinking about uh, Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1 with the Crate Dragon being a quest from KOTOR. Is the KOTOR TV show uh, by D.B. Weiss still happening? Are you stoked for it? Um... I think the KOTOR, I think there is movement in KOTOR in the Star Wars uh, cinematic space I, in that kind of uh, time frame. I think that's happening. They're, they're just launching into the High Republic, which I think is even before Knights of the Old Republic, I believe. It's hard to kind of keep all of the timelines together. Um, but yes, it was definitely a deep cut, and it was purposeful. Uh, if anybody watched season uh, two, episode one, chapter nine of The Mandalorian, it's amazing. It's honestly one of the best hours of television I've ever watched. Uh, but a huge dragon, a crate dragon, gets killed, and there's this uh, this pearl. And what I've read and found out about it, you know, I don't profess to know every single part of the Star Wars. I am not Dave Filoni, and uh, may the Force be with Dave Filoni forever. Uh, but apparently the Force is with that pearl that the Sand People found, and it's a significant part of the lore. Um, and it has some real properties, which are incredibly important. And nothing in on frame nothing put into the Mandalorian doesn't serve a purpose or has um, 
you know, is devoid of correlation to other lore and other parts of the Star Wars universe. And I know KOTOR is incredibly important uh, to Lucasfilm, and it's becoming more so, I believe. And I think that we're going to see something incredible based around that era uh soon and i'm sure there's some of you in the chat right now i've said gore the movie god xbox seems to be going deep into horror the medium and scorn are two of the few confirmed xbox series only game x only games coming uh right now and both look terrifying and awesome yeah it sucks that the medium got delayed i watched uh, david jaffe just go off on his uh, youtube channel he's the the former head of the god of war franchise for sony and he's a huge fan of xbox and game pass but he could not believe that series x launched and they pushed back the medium uh i think it, it comes out in spring 2021 uh, but yeah, psyched about that. I'm not a huge horror guy. You guys know that. I'm not a, like, a crazy huge fan of horror movies or TV shows or uh, video games. Uh, but if they're done right, like Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7, um, sometimes it's really fun to be terrified. I like the Evil Within games as well. They were super cool. But speaking of horror, uh, our second story has to do with uh, John Krasinski, uh, who was actually once rumored, uh, or he auditioned to be Captain America, believe it or not, and he and his wife, Emily Blunt, may actually be Mr. and Mrs. Fantastic in the MCU. That That is something that keeps on happening. Uh, but A Quiet Place 3, this is the trailer for A Quiet Place 2, which now has been pushed back to April. This trailer is terrifying, by the way. The, movie, the first one was fantastic. Now, that's a horror movie that I really could get behind. I loved Quiet Place. This was supposed to come out this year, this terrible, this horror movie of a year. Uh, but of course, like every other cool thing uh, in Hollywood, basically, it got pushed back. So it comes out, Quiet Place 2 comes out, if everything is sort of hunky-dory, in um, uh, spring 2021. And then in 2022, A Quiet Place 3, all the deals and all the stuff has been put together. Krasinski's going to come back and write and direct. Um, and it's supposed to be kind of a side story. It's supposed to take us into places that are tangential to A Quiet Place. But this is a cool universe. Definitely feels a lot like uh, The Last of Us, um, but it was crazy, and of course it deals with monsters that um, you don't, you have to be quiet. They can hear you. They have incredible hearing. And if they hear you, and there were some amazing tense sequences in the first, uh, in the first film, where people just had to say something, they had to like express themselves, and then they, you were just completely frightened out of your mind. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to A Quiet Place 2, and now we can all look forward to A Quiet Place 3. And uh, for those that don't know, the other interesting news, you know, kind of related to the, the uh, this sort of hopefulness around movies coming out again and being able to go to the theaters, um, uh, Pfizer, I think, announced today they've been 90% successful with their vaccine trials so far, or it's been effective in 90% of the tests uh, people that they've injected it into, but they still have a lot more work to do, a lot more testing to do. But that that was some news that percolated out today. Um, and so it feels like some of the vaccine stuff that's happening, this isn't really entertainment related, but it relates to all of us, right? We, uh, we may be on course for having an effective vaccine and... Uh, uh, who knows? We may be able to all go back to theaters again soon, you know, which uh, I think we could all hope for. Uh, let's see. I got some other questions in here. Question from uh, Sussy says, uh, Nintendo's upcoming lineup seems to be super lackluster. Do you predict a jaw-dropping announcement soon? Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4. I'm really dumbfounded by how little they have announced. Well, they had all of the Mario stuff. And Mario Kart Live, I still have this wonderful kart on my desk. I, I haven't been able to play this again. <laughs> I've been been a Viking, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. They, they have announced this the flurry of cool Mario stuff. I'm looking forward to uh, the the uh, uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Looks like a prequel, like a super fun prequel to uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, which is my favorite game of all time. Uh, but I do feel you. I, I feel like... Nintendo probably took a little bit of a breath because, uh, no pun intended, they they knew that all the hype and the buzz was going to be around these super powerful 4K 60 frames a second or 120 frames per second or 8K machines that were coming to market from Xbox and uh, Sony. And Nintendo always does this. They kind of get out of the way. They let the rest of the business do all of their thing. They know that that's happening. And then they come out with their 
response and their answer. And I think what we're going to see, this is totally, again, my prediction, they're going to buy Sega. No, I'm, the, my prediction is uh, everybody's going to buy Sega. No, um, my prediction is that uh, um, we're going to see a teaser for an enhanced Switch in January. And likely... Um, we're going to get that switch with the new Breath of the Wild 2, and it will look way better on this enhanced switch, which might be spring of 2021. Um, and so I think that's been part of the reason why we haven't seen a flurry of like brand new experiences, because I think there's a lot of work internally at Nintendo probably to figure out how to be as fair as they can be to existing switch owners they want to sell as many units as they can you know get into the marketplace through the end of the year um and uh also make a convincing case for people to make this upgrade when when they announce this inevitable you know new version of nintendo switch it would be very interesting though because nintendo always does something you don't expect it would be very interesting if they like went with a totally different uh, system or a brand or a name. They've been so successful with the Switch. I cannot uh, disassociate the idea of Nintendo and Switch. That's their course for a long time, right? It, they've just It's been a perfect fit, this blending of all of their strengths with all the, uh, the mobility of their uh, portable platforms and their console teams and everybody working uh, together to make excellent Switch software and what a run they've had on this platform so far. And it, yes, that's, I think, part of our um, you know, noticing the absence of that that uh, that pace of brand new awesome surprises, um, but I think that's probably what it is. They totally read the market. I saw um, this is more bonus rundown content here. Uh, at least in Canada, they're going to be releasing um, Mario Kart Live and Switch bundles, and it's all going to be wrapped up into one thing. Uh, I don't know what the price is. You guys probably know what the price is. You can tell me what it is down there in the chat. Uh, but that is something that they're trying to find all of the, uh, you know, manufacturing and, and uh, getting these into the retail channels because I think these are going to be super hot uh, Christmas items for sure. Uh, Mr. Brockerock says, hey, Vic, I know that Xbox didn't have a big seller, but do you think that maybe it's actually OK? They release now for the diehards and then a second wave comes in spring uh, when the new games drop. Listen, this Series X is phenomenal. It's an amazing platform. And if you pick this up, you are going to be very happy if you can find it. I know that they've been, uh, um, you know, pre-orders were a nightmare, just like the Sony pre-orders were. Uh, I don't think you're going to be disappointed, and um, I'm going to get into a game that has launched on other consoles, the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but I'm going to talk about it as I've been enjoying it on the Series X, um, but that comes after the rundown. We're going to move on to our next story, and then I'll pick up on a couple more chat items right here. Um, and this was something that happened uh, on the same Saturday that we heard that Joe Biden um, was, uh, uh, you know, all the networks... Uh, did all of their number crunching and they announced that Joe Biden was the uh, president of the states. But we also found out that a new um, repackage or remastered, the legendary remastered edition of uh, Mass Effect, uh, the trilogy is coming out in spring 2021. It's just a teaser video. We don't know much more than that, but then there were also images uh, sort of suggesting that more, of course, more Mass Effect is coming. Um, so we have a little bit of a wait to replay these games in, uh, you know, all their 4K, uh, 4K glory uh, and to re-experience the incredible storytelling that was in Mass Effect. Maybe there will be some additional um, sort of paint and brush strokes applied to the trilogy to appease the people that were um, offended or affected by some of the choices that Bioware had to make uh, or chose to make to get the games to market initially. I know there were a lot of people that were very disappointed with the way that Mass Effect 3 um, ended, so much so that uh, some changes were made after the fact. And, um, I, you know, I freaking love those games. I actually I, I have fond memory of playing, I think it was 3, um, with my daughter, my six-month-old daughter was sleeping on my chest, you know? She was just curled up right there, and I was sitting back playing Mass Effect and uh, in that chair. And, uh, yeah, it was a crazy... Uh a crazy emotional thread to that incredible series. Um, it's certainly the series that I think put Bioware on the map um, in a way 
that you know the entire world took notice. I think everybody really picked up on how talented they were with Kotor and uh, y- you know with um, the the other RPG content that they've done the Dragon Age games as well. Uh, but Mass Effect was like a whole other. It was so challenging and mature and um, smart and evolutionary and revolutionary as the you know the games kind of expanded across uh, multiple iterations. We saw Bioware as a company kind of really stretch and try lots of new things so that players of the first Mass Effect were getting a, t- a different experience by the time they were in Mass Effect 3, which is hard to do, you know? Um, but they pulled it off. And it's just too bad that Andromeda was such a... Um, uh, a per, you know, a, a production quality letdown, you know, which just not what we expected out of uh, Bioware when it launched. And I understand it's much better. And I don't know if um, I actually don't I didn't even consider if uh, Andromeda is included in there. Right. It's by it's Mass Effect Andromeda. I think it might be in there as well. Um, but if it is, then it will be fixed. Right. And uh, it'll be better. Um, but yeah, super psyched to revisit those games and absolutely can't wait to uh, uh, get back into the world of Mass Effect in any way that it's coming out. Uh, the audio is drowning me out. What audio? It's just me. The audio. Oh, the game. Oh, the trailer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had it up loud. Sorry about that. I, I've got like 50 little video clips in here, and I just I, I uh, forgot to set the uh, audio on that. Uh, but yeah, if they fix the ending, this is from Gore the Movie Guy. If they fix the ending of ME3, this trilogy remaster would be a 10 out of 10, no matter how upgraded the graphics are. There you go. I think that this is... Um, you know, this is a response, you know, this is going to be Bioware kind of saying, don't forget how freaking talented we are, you know, uh, Anthem let a lot of people down, Andromeda let a lot of people down, I'm super psyched for whatever they're they're pulling together for Dragon Age, but Mass Effect, if they can uh, uh, bring us all back around and get us fired up for more on that, that's going to be a massive, no pun intended, uh, a- achievement from uh, Bioware and great for uh, EA as well. Um, and yes, uh, rando, uh, random moose brain says, alas, a new Mass Effect is in development, which is great. I'm doing great, Vic. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> uh, the controls on the first game needed an overhaul. Grenades were the, the back button on the 360 controller. Good callback there, Blair. Blair Farrell with the good comment. Uh, let's see if I missed any comments or questions. Let's see. Uh, uh, Gore the movie god. Everybody's going to buy Sega. Sega's just sitting there like, we're working on a new Sonic. Leave us alone. Everybody's going to want to buy them. Um, well, I think what it is is we just miss um, the... the uh, I don't know, Sega all amped up, you know, like Sega in the hardware discussions in a major way. I mean, they've been making awesome things. You know, there are tons of great Sega titles over the last several years. And uh, it would just be, it would, but they also have all of these amazing brands that they can't quite keep up with, you know, and it would be cool for, um, for them to have that horsepower and to be kind of in the console mix and, uh, yeah, it would be super rad if, if I, I mean, listen, it, the, the other huge rumor out there is that Sony might buy Konami and, and take control of, uh, of the Metal Gear franchise. And, you know, imagine that announcement, the uh, a remastered Metal Gear Solid 1 and, and like new Metal Gear experiences exclusive to PlayStation. Um, but I think that would be pretty exciting too. Question, what's your thoughts on the impact of scalpers this year given the the most that most sales will be online? No precedent. This is from Andrew. Uh, scalpers suck. Scalpers are um, uh, you, you know they're they're just gross. They're, they're people with uh, you know I don't know, a lack of, of morals and empathy. They're basically taking joy out of the world. They're sucking it out of the world, and it's all from greed, you know? And it's unfortunate that um, the structures of online shopping and, and uh, the, the, the setups that all of these different um, auction sites and stuff have to allow that kind of behavior is just abominable. And, yeah, I mean, we see it sometimes as kind of insider efforts as well which is also gross and i hope that if co- companies discover that kind of stuff in internally 
um, that they let those people go right away and they send out some pretty big messages. It would also be awesome if Amazon and eBay and stuff like that just sort of drop the hammer on scalpers and scumbags out there trying to I mean, look, we saw that happen at the beginning of the coronavirus. We saw people just, uh, you know, scoring as many wipes and, uh, you know, hand uh, sanitizers and things like that that they possibly could. And then they were selling them at huge, huge, for huge profits. And uh, they got called out by that. Then some reporters, some investigative reporters were like opening the backs of trucks and then holding a microphone up to people. Why are you doing this? You know, this is keeping a lot of these things out of people's hands. And obviously, this it's not quite the same thing when you're talking about, you know, fun personal electronics and video games and stuff. But um, God, we need joy and people need to have access to this joy in 2020, you know. And uh, I think Sony and Microsoft did a, as good of a job as they possibly could have and we could possibly expect in a year like this, you know, to sort of fly through the asteroids of uh, manufacturing and, and um, you know, retail demands and, and consumer demand and still, you know, able to make enough to uh, make a dent in the world and get enough into people's hands that they're super excited and they can't wait and we're still going to have kind of a, a holiday season of people opening up new machines and trying out all of this next-gen software um, in this year is pretty great. And, um, yeah, the only the only tarnish on it is, uh, you know, the, the copious amounts of scumbags out there that have taken advantage of situations and, and locked all that stuff up. You know, it's gross. You know, and, and honestly, like, um, it's been a, a year of, because we're all at home, you know, it's been a year of products being announced and then they're sold out like 20 seconds later, like the uh, analog pocket, you know. Um, I don't know how the, I haven't tracked because I've been in game space right now, but I don't know how the iPhone launches have been, the pre-orders and all that stuff, but I suspect those all sold out immediately as well. Um, but it's been a year of that. It's been a year of people... Um, wanting to pick up something to engage with or entertain themselves with and a lot of frustration. I get a lot of people tweeting me just saying, you know, I didn't make it. I didn't get the pre-order. I get a lot of people saying, email, uh, t tweeting at me that their pre-orders were canceled, which ugh, that's horrible. But this is also, this is also a crap year, man. And, um, there have been very few wins for most of us in 2020. And I think we just have to kind of, uh, uh, we have to find our joys in as many other places as we can, you know? But uh, I feel for you if you did pre-order and it, A, got canceled or, you know, you couldn't make it to the pre-orders and, and um, someone's trying to scalp you on something or trying to, uh, you know, sell it at four times retail value, I would say just wait, you know? Like, there's no harm in waiting. And maybe one of the blessings in disguise with the the, the lack of, inventory that we're kind of seeing as we we go into the the back quarter of the year is that there aren't that many launch exclusives or launch titles that really show off everything that's possible yet there's a lot of updated software that's going to run and look way better in next gen and that's been my experience uh for a big part of it on xbox series x so far it's been amazing to revisit excellent games like titanfall 2 and just have my my jaw on the floor uh, and I'm going to show you that. That's that's part of the plan today. We're going to do um, my review, and then we're going to jump on to the Series X, and I've got games downloading for the Xbox One X, and, and uh, I've got a switcher here. We'll bounce back and forth, um, and we'll check out a little bit of how games run on One X and, and how games run on Series X. But honestly, the message I want to send out to anybody that's waiting on anything, whether you're waiting on a Mario Kart Live or uh, a Switch, because I know Switches have been hard to get, uh, PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X, and you just you can't find one for whatever reason it sucks and i feel for you uh, but waiting with around this business usually tends out to be a very good thing you know sometimes these machines launch and and uh um stuff's a little finicky or buggy or whatever or there aren't, aren't enough games to kind of justify all of that expense you also have to factor in and i keep talking about this with the series x and the uh 
um, and I will be with the PlayStation 5. I mean, these are consoles that are really going to force you to kind of uh, do a, an inventory on all the equipment that you run your game systems through. Because you're gonna, if you buy these 4K 60 frame per second capable machines, you're going to want a television set and an, uh, a sound system that's going to take advantage of all of the, the benefits that these things offer. And then suddenly you're talking about a, like thousands of dollars to get all of that stuff together. So... Um, I, you know, don't get too frustrated if you have to wait a little while. It may end up serving you really, really well. And the stack of titles that you will be able to get when you get the machine, when you're absolutely actually able to get the system, uh, will just be bigger. And there and there will be a lot of less expensive options that way too. You know, it sucks when you're thinking, I just want to get lost in it and I want to, you know, join in all the hype that everybody's got right now. And I totally get that. And I've definitely felt that many times in my life too. Um, but this this is my career. This is my job, right? And I don't live a normal life with this stuff. This is what, you know, the companies work with me and they send me the stuff to review and talk about. And uh, I'm cognizant that I represent this weird um, anomaly, you know? And... Um, I, it's great to have the the dreams and the aspirations and the desires for all this stuff, and I I still do. I'm right there with you, uh, but I think this is also a year to kind of take personal stock and 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 determine what's really important for you in your life, you know, um, right now. And the other side of it is that these things will be widely available soon, and they're the 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 size of the libraries for these things will just grow and. Uh, uh, be uh, a better value. And um, so hang in there, um, but just take care of yourself and take care of the people that you love, right? Like this, is, this has been a hard year. Uh, but anyways, let's talk about something that uh, I have been enjoying. Let's get into uh, my review. Uh, Pleasure Cabbage says, back to CRT. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll catch up on chat in a second here, but I'm going um, to do a review now of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, where you get to play a uh, a character named Ivor. And uh, this is a gorgeous game, as you can see. So some of this imagery, I think, is taken sort of in, in best case scenario. I'm looking at a lot of the Ubisoft uh, provided material right now. Um, but the Xbox Series X runs very close to this caliber of visual. And you start your adventure in Norway. You're part of a, you know, a team of uh, warriors with um, a, a, a real sort of pride for what they do and what they believe in. And then they are sort of gifted with this opportunity to travel to the bountiful shores of England. And what you do once you get to England is you sort of create a settlement and you get used to the life and the comforts and um, also all of the intricacies of the relationships that exist on the lands around you. There's all of these different lords and kings and leaders and stuff that you get embroiled with and you're trying to create alliances but also take over different areas and you know Assassin's Creed. This is a franchise that uh, is a lot more than what you first see you know there's a lot more going on I underneath and of course you, you get sort of pulled into the the uh, the order of the hidden oh, ones yeah, and nice. they've got a bunch of uh, bounties on uh, different characters that you want to go and get these are the assassin targets that you want to go out and get um, but you, you know what's interesting about this game is that it really feels more like an RPG than I think the uh, franchise has ever felt and they were already going in this direction with Origins and Odyssey which were both terrific games we were in ancient Egypt and then ancient Greece and this uh, you know m medieval-esque I actually don't know what the what the exact year the exact time period of, of the game is I think it's in the Middle Ages but uh, um, this sort of ancient London that we get to explore is just so sumptuous and gorgeous and it's varied like crazy. Uh, but what I've discovered when I've been playing the game is that it's not quite as overwhelming as uh, I found Odyssey to be. Odyssey was amazing and I loved the Mediterranean and exploring on ships and stuff, but I just felt like I was going off on, I felt like 
like new objectives just kept popping up all over the damn place and it was giving me OCD, you know, like I was like, where do I go? What do I do? There's just so many different things happening, which is wonderful and it's a very addictive thing. And I'll tell you, I've been loving Valhalla so much, I want to now go back and replay some Origins and Odyssey as well. But there, there is something really... Um, uh, just accessible and joyous about being a Viking. And the thing that really got me with this game too is that it doesn't really feel like the other Assassin's Creed games and that you're creating a, uh, you're like a community in the game. You're actually building um, all kinds of uh, establishments and relationships. You actually, in your settlement, you can upgrade the buildings. And uh, of course, there's lots of knickknacks knickknacks to pick up lots of cool armor and weaponry and you can augment those and of course you've got your hidden blade and you've got your cool raven to get the raven sights and stuff you can get onto long ships and what they've done with this game too is that um they've empowered you to go on raids with everybody so you never f feel like you're fully alone like you do in other assassin's creed games and then you're sort of thrust into this um, historically significant tale where you're going to encounter all kinds of really famous historical figures, kind of Forrest Gump-like, I've said that, that before. There is a little bit of that in this game, but it really does feel like a personal journey, but you're surrounded by kind of your your family and your friends, and they're always along with you. And you're also recruiting people along the way, and you're decking out your space so that it looks cooler, and there's you know more um, benefits from you know upgrading your weaponry or talking to people that are in touch with the mystical sort of elements of Norse culture. Um, there's also a lot of that in the game as well. It hits on a bunch of different layers. And on Xbox Series X, the game runs at 4K 60 frames per second, and it's absolutely stunning. There's, you know, marshlands and rivers to traverse. There's uh, lots of mountainous areas. You're going to get into the snow. You're going to be uh, getting into the intrigue, the political intrigue, and, and uh, uh, the infighting that's happening with families and kingdoms across the land. You're going to find a lot of, uh, you know, Norse artifacts and Roman artifacts and lots of allusions and connections to the entirety of the lore of um, uh, Assassin's Creed. And, uh, uh, and you can play as a, a male or female character. I saw your uh, comment there, John Boko. I played for six hours when I um, first got hands-on. Oh, that was brutal that the guy just did that. Uh, that is... Uh, Evar. It's I have to remember all of these different... Uh, I think it's Evar. You play as Ivor... And then there's Ivar is his buddy who's got this kind of huge scar on there. Uh, but you can choose to be a male or a female. And when I played in the hands-on, I put a good six hours into the game and was blown away by it. But I was I played female there. The first time I got hands-on, I played as a male. And then I've started my uh, new adventure in Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla as a male again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can have um, same-sex relationships. Uh, you, you know, you've got characters of uh you've got male or female characters that you're going to run into along the way everybody's a badass warrior of course but there are lots of townsfolk and lots of kind of world missions that are um oops they're kind of uh, uh i do that every time i need i need like bigger buttons or something out there you you run into these open world missions that are a very organic feeling you'll be running around the countryside and then you'll find somebody i found some woman that needed help with um getting her uh, the the cats that were in her house out into the field to chase all the rats. And then I was rewarded with something. Um, you're also, I'm really a big fan of the exploration game in the Assassin's Creed titles. And this one is no slouch either, where you dive under the ground and you you know look into all the nooks and crannies to find loot and armor and, and uh, uh, the materials that you're going to need to upgrade your settlement. Uh, it's really addictive and really fun. I will say, that it took a good 15 hours for the game to like get its hooks into me and I've got a lot more to play too. It's a massive, massive game. Um, but I played it enough that I know how I feel about the game. The mechanics are great. Uh, it's hard for me in 2020 to not compare it to Ghost of Tsushima, uh, which I feel played a little bit better, but it's also Ghost of Tsushima is less ambitious in, in its scope than Valhalla is. Valhalla is freaking massive. It's a huge game. There's so much territory to cross. And one of the things that 
you definitely notice when you're playing Valhalla is you'll get into a story moment where you go up and you you know you do one of the uh, uh, the things that you're supposed to do and you drop off like a character that you had to catch or something like that and then you'll talk with one of your mates uh, from your village and they'll say all right perfect we'll meet you over there and then the, <laughs> your next part of the mission is a million miles away and you may not have un- unlocked the fast travel point near it so get on your horse and go until you hit the river and then get on your boat and go and you know of course they want you to see everything but it's so big that sometimes it was just like oh my god i i gotta go all over there again okay let's go you know um this is not a game you're gonna speed through does anybody do like speed plays of assassin's creed games because it's massive and of course you've got all of these rpg you know skills that you can uh level up with which will boost your health or your um your uh uh, your energy levels um or your armor uh and then you get lots of cool abilities so that you can chuck axes at people or uh I, i one of the cool ones is you have like a harpoon that you can shoot out at people and you pull them into into you and then you stab them Uh, Of course, you're going to pull off all kinds of great assassins and assassinations. It's incredibly gory and violent, um, and lots of heads go lopping off. That was timed out pretty good right there. I didn't know that was coming. Um, But it's predictable because, of course, you're a fierce Viking. Uh, But there's so much beauty in the mythology and, uh, you know, the uh, the artwork and the, and the, the culture that is able to be mined by the incredibly talented artists at Ubisoft and they just go for it man it is absolutely gorgeous all of the uh, you know the the firelight that you'll see on the walls and in the towns and in the uh, the longhouses that you take over and and um, it's always also very bustling it was kind of like a mixture of playing um, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and The Witcher 3 um, and certainly all of the the streaks of the Assassin's branding and franchise are a part of this as well but um, much like Black Flag kind of carved out its own unique vibe and I think Origins also did that again this one does as well you know and it's it's amazing that UB has crafted this this overarching uh, you know uh, brand this franchise that allows us to go in all of these dis- disparate kind of directions and and experience these elements of history this is one that seems incredibly predictable, like the the success of Assassin's Creed 1 and then the announcement that 2 was coming. This was something that you could easily extrapolate. One day we are, are going to play as a Viking in the Assassin's Creed franchise, and that day has come, and uh, I'm happy to report that it's a, it's a lot of fun, and it's incredibly addictive. Do I like it better than Ghosts of Tsushima? Uh, I don't know yet. I think one of the things that I appreciated about Ghost of Tsushima was that although the game was sprawling and large and ambitious and, and, uh, you know, a beautiful kind of new direction for Sucker Punch and almost an answer to um, some of the exhaustive qualities of the Assassin's Creed franchise, not the least of which is the fact that there are so many of them, um, it it was also contained and it also kind of uh, made it made sense from beginning to end. It didn't ever feel like it was out of control. And Assassin's Creed games, as they keep trying to level up and and one-up each other, do have elements of that where it's like, oh my God, is this thing... I'm here for a while. I mean, you you can't rush through this stuff. You're going to be there for a while. You're going to be watching some story for a while. You're going to be traveling across the land for a while. You're going to be on missions that take a while. Even going into an underground cavern where you know there's some loot and a cool part of your costume is there. You just don't know how you're going to get there. But that's also the win of the franchise as well, you know? And I think the people that will love this the most are people that have taken a break, maybe got exhausted by how many Assassin's Creed games Yubi was making, and they can go back to this and uh, they can feel um, like they're going to get a lot of a lot of joy and a lot of value out of the experience. Like you're living in this space for a long time, and it's beautiful. It's super cool. I mean, you can tattoo yourself up. You can customize your ships and the shipyards. Um, you know, like there's, there's so many details. This is the the hidden ones group where they send you out on the uh, missions to go off and and kill the people uh, that you have to. And you know, lots and lots to explore. I love this game. 
Um, but I think if I have to pick one between Ghost of Tsushima and Assassin's Creed Valhalla so far this year, from what I've played so far, um, I would say that I, I think I like Ghost just a little bit more, um, partially because I was just so impressed by what Sucker Punch achieved. But that's not to take anything away from this game. It's, it's extraordinary as well. And, uh, you know, obviously one of the strongest in the Assassin's Creed lineage. Um, so uh, the other thing that I wanted to say for sure is that that is the game. You know, if you're getting the Xbox Series X, that's the game you want. You want to pick up Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You want to play this game in 4K at 60 frames per second. Shows off the power of the machine beautifully. Um, I'm going to try to go back and forth to show you Xbox One X and Xbox Series X. Uh, but 4K at 60 is awesome. I did notice there was a little bit of um, V-syncing and, and like screen tearing happening as I was whipping cameras around. The game doesn't come out until tomorrow. Uh, and likely patches are already starting to happen on this machine. It's new hardware and a you know brand new game, so I'm I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and and think that y Ubi's going to tune everything so it's as polished as can be. But you're going to see it in the facial details and the animations and the reactions that people have and vistas that go on forever with no pop in or draw in. Um, the other thing that I'm noticing about next gen is like holy crap HDR sunsets in every game. So important. And, um, and so beautiful, and, and this 4K HDR-capable TV, this OLED TV that I've had since 2016, is like, it's got new life, you know? It's not like the 1X and, the, and the, um, uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro were slouches, and I had some beautiful experiences, like Ghost of Tsushima, on that television, but it just feels like, wow, this is what my TV can do? Um, you know, it's, it's incredibly exciting. But yes, if you're picking up the Series X, that's the game you want, is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I haven't checked it out on the PlayStation 5, but I'm sure it's just as strong there. But of course, PlayStation 5 has Miles Morales, which is amazing. Uh, so um, I th I'm going to give um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, seriously one of the most beautiful historical games I've ever played. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Whew! Okay, uh, I chatted a bit. Um, we're going to take a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and uh, you guys are going to be able to see it comparative to the Xbox One X. Um, but it is, it's marvelous, and UB knows what they're doing. This is the Origins and Black Flag team, by the way, and they are very, very talented and strong. It's a slow ramp, though. It seriously took me 15 hours, and I'm like, oh, ah, okay. There's all of these different elements in there that are just a blast and that's i don't I, I talked a lot i don't want to spoil too much but uh um i think this is for the, the people that are diehards of assassin's creed uh people that are picking up a series x and for people that have taken a break this is a great one to jump back in um okay let us play um ah we got cha uh, ch chamber in there saying miles morales is like a seven hour game selling a dlc as a full game uh, well, Chamber, it's less expensive than a full game. You get all of Manhattan to cruise around in. The story isn't as long, and, they, and Sony's been straight up about all that. On PlayStation 5, it all has all kinds of next-gen uh, art embellishments like ray tracing applied to it and 60 frames per second. Um, and I don't know if you played Spider-Man in 2018, but it, that was our game of the year. And they've also made Manhattan feel unique to this character and the world of this character. So the story isn't super long, but it's very rich, and the character is phenomenal. I'm talking Miles Morales right now, not Assassin's Creed, just switched up in our live programming here. Um, I think it more than justifies the price of the game. But the other thing to consider is that once you have sort of beat the objectives of the game, you're still fighting crime. You're still cruising around and uh, uh, taking care of bad guys and unlocking new bits and pieces and suits and stuff. So I, I played Marvel Spider-Man way longer than just what the story had to offer. I still go back and play it, and I can't wait to play the remastered version of, of the 2018 Marvel Spider-Man. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about Miles Morales, and I honestly wouldn't mind if Insomniac said, okay, well, this has been successful. Let's uh, ramp up the release schedules on our superhero story-based experiences, 
like Spider-Man. And of course, when you put Miles Morales out in the market, it sort of opens up the idea of maybe there's a Venom game or a Carnage game or a Gwen Stacy uh, Spider-Girl game or more of the Spider-Verse sort of has their own experiences. I think it would be incredible if we got something in, this is where they take place in Manhattan, you know? And just fully embellish and stretch out these characters and add different corners of of this universe. So then maybe it's uh, and 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 what it would take is adding another team that's focused on new content in this world, but on a regular stream on a regular basis. I, I it's going to drive me crazy if we have to wait two more years for more Spidey stuff. But we probably will have to because the expectation is that it's got to be as big as uh, 2018 uh, with all kinds of new next-gen embellishment. But these are comic characters, and comic stories come out every month. So I, I would like more, and I would be fine if the scale of more meant that they had to be the size of Miles Morales. Uh, I don't think people are going to be disappointed with Miles Morales out there, even though it's seven hours. Um, seven hours in quotes. Um, okay, uh, Spider-Man was great, got the platinum, uh, expecting nothing less from Morales. You're going to love it, Magic Circle, I promise you. Vic, I take your word over any other reviewers I've read. Thanks for that. Oh, that's awesome, Chamber. Um, it, you know, it's it, it's amazing. And the other thing, too, and it, this is kind of part of my discussion on Assassins right there, it, it's sometimes, and Red Dead Redemption, too, you know, like... I don't know about you guys, but I've played a lot of games where it's like, I love it, I love it, I I hate it, I hate it, I love it, I love it, I love it, oh my God, this is so long, oh my God, I love it, I love it. And Red Dead did that for me. It was like, I went through this whole story and I was like, oh my God, I, I, I don't, I need a break from this game. And, it, you know, a lot of people did, you know, all the stats and figures of uh, who actually beat Red Dead Redemption 2. I did, by the way, I stuck with it and got through it. And I, I overall, I loved it, but it was like, oh my God. It'll kind of overstate its welcome. And I can kind of see that with some of the Assassin's Valhalla. It's like there's some stuff in there that embellishes the game world and trains you up. But it also feels like a little slow going for people like us and many of us on the chat today that have played so many Assassin's Creed games, it's like, yeah, is there a fast forward button on some of this? I want some cool shit. I want to go kill some people. Let's go. Um, but of course, the, you know, they're looking at every one of these things as this full flesh story and, and uh, they got to take their time to kind of bring us into all of that. And I get it. Um, and I, like I say, it took me like 15 hours to get in there. Whereas Ghost of Tsushima, it did take me a little while to get into there because I was still kind of reeling from what I had just played with The Last of Us Part Two. That was a game where, I mean, you hate everything that's happening at a point in the game, but it never ever is like, oh, this is boring. You know, like I didn't ever feel like, oh, this is taking too long. I was like riveted the entire time, you know, uh, but that's hard to do. It's hard to do because they don't exp- they, like people complain about hours of games and the length of games based on the price and i understand that but sometimes and i think this was the point that i was trying to get to sometimes it's okay to have a impactful experience and one that i always think about is eco uh fumeda fumido oeda's masterpiece which wasn't a long game but it was an amazing game and at the end of it it was like oh my god i never i don't want to leave is that it i don't get more i want to stay here but that's a good feeling to have. That's a good feeling to leave a consumer of anything with, you know, um, as long as you can follow it up. And he did. But um, I think sometimes video games can can just be a little too indulgent. But I don't blame developers trying to sort of find that moving target because there are people out there that want 100 hours out of everything that they buy. And there, are, I mean, we see so many free-to-play games where people play 500 hours of shooting somebody and building things, and I can't begrudge anybody. And and so, and game designers and developers are all trying to navigate this kind of weird sea of different ex- expectations around every one of these huge experiences. But uh, I guess this is a long and rambling way to say that Miles Morales rocks, and it rocks even and in spite of, and maybe a little bit because of its brevity. Okay, let us play. Yeah, we got Nazer saying, I'll take a varied and super tight 10-hour experience over an 80-hour uh, collectathon that has five missions and copy and paste over that any day. 
Okay, I think my Xbox just fell asleep, so I'm going to turn them both on here. Here we go. Uh, just back to Valhalla for one second. This is from Mike Williams. Is it worth picking up uh, for Xbox One if you're only going to upgrade next year? Is the next-gen updates worth the wait? Uh, I, I think it's totally worth playing, for sure. It's still a beautiful game. I'm going to show you, I'm, I'll show you um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla on both machines right now. Of course, I'm streaming at 1080p 60 frames per second, so take that into account. We're not streaming at 4K 60. Um, so, uh, and I'm also putting it in the little window. Oh, you know what I didn't have time to do? I was going to try to put a filter on to sort of brighten things up, but I didn't have time to do that. So hopefully we're not too dark. Um, but let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to load up, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the one X. Um, I honestly, I don't know what's going to happen here because... It's the same account. Okay, so it's not open on the other one. So um, let's see what what's going on here. Hey, Vic, are you still um, disturbed by Soldier of Fortune? I'm disturbed about the idea of uh, creating um, violence for violence' sake. Um, that was a game that sort of seemed... That's a good question. That's from Zombie Kohi. The thing that disturbed me wasn't so much that it was violent. I'd already played a lot of violent games. It was that it was celebrating that violence and commercializing the violence. Like it was, um, it was kind of, it was, I mean, that seemed to be the whole reason why you would want to get that game. And, and uh, it was just a disturbing thought. It was like, uh, you, you know, a mercenary game, like go off and just kill everything. It was like, I guess, giving you this, the the opportunity to be like a, a Punisher um, type thing. But the thing that didn't correlate for me is that it was a private, you, you know, branded business that exists in reality. And um, I don't know, man, I that's a world I, I don't quite get. I'm I'm in Canada, you know. Like guns are way harder to get up here, and we just don't have that same kind of sort of gun crazy culture in our country. And I've grown up like that, so it's hard for me to wrap my head around it. Now that being said, I love shooting games, and when I was a kid, I used to play guns and cops and robbers, and I understand the adrenaline and the action of that. And I think that there's something in the fantasy of that that's that's uh, you know, primal and and enjoyable and addictive, um, but that's not what Soldier of Fortune purported to be. It was much more of like you can feel like a gritty, you know, mercenary out in the real world, and you're taking matters into your own hands and and just shoot at people until they fall apart in a bunch of different pieces, you know, and, and blast them. And it's like, mm, yeah, that's, I, I don't want to do that. It's the same thing with me in horror films and stuff. Like I, I don't really get the crazy joy of, uh, of seeing people turn into hamburger meat. You know, <laughs> it's just not my thing. Uh, hey everybody. Uh, how's it going? I buy digital. Vic, have I seen Borat too? I sure did. It was, uh, it was amazing. And um, maddening and uh, terrifying, um, but funny as hell. God, that guy is so talented. And how does he get away with all that? How does he have the uh, the um, the balls to do what he does? But how does he get away with all that? Uh, Vic, so far in 2020, what's been the game that's hit you the most emotionally? Uh, that's a good question, Goku, and it's great to see you. Um, I think it was uh, The Last of Us Part Two, and that was a game with severe violence in it. It was so violent that I, uh, I, I honestly, oh, we're on a, we're on a mission right now. Okay. Hold on one sec. That was a game that was so violent talking about violent video games that I, I, um, I put disclaimers up on the video and I hadn't ever done that on a video game sort of view, you, you know, uh, review before, but it was, it was terrifying and shocking. Uh, where are we, where are we going now? Okay. Um, so we're cruising here. I should probably, ah, we'll just go. So we're cruising along and, um, oh, you know what? I will, because I don't know if, I don't know if, uh, Yubi's going to do anything on, on music. I just don't know. Uh, I'm just going to turn the sound off or music off one second. Oh, I have the sound off. Okay. Uh, I will turn the sound on in a second. Um, music off. Okay, 
Um, and we're going to turn the audio on. So, um, yeah, I think it was Last of Us Part Two. That was incredibly emotional. Ghost of Tsushima has some really beautiful moments as well, um, which I was really surprised and, and uh, pleased by. Okay. Do you want to turn the turn off the blood, old man, evil one? No. See, I'm okay if, if violence is a part of the narrative. It's fine. Um, you know, if it's part of the story, uh, it's it's okay. But um, yeah, you bring up a very good point there with Soldier of Fortune. And uh, you know, I, I don't mean like if you like it, that's cool. That 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 can be your thing. Um, okay, so this is the Xbox One X version of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And uh, you're seeing it at 1080p, 30 frames a second. It looks a little more, um, a little, you know, less like it's moving with pace than, uh, I don't want to say sluggish, because it's not sluggish. It's still totally playable. This is the way that we've been playing Assassin's Creed games forever on console. Um, but you'll see, okay, I want to, I'm stuck in my fence here. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I go? Okay, can I go through here? No. Okay, I can. Okay. I want to catch up with my people. And we are trying to get somewhere, I think, right? We're trying to take... Uh, oh, I think I, I left the king that I was supposed to put on the horse behind me. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, go. Run, run. Okay, I screwed up. Because I jumped in. Okay, so get on. Get on here. Where's my horse? Where did he go? Okay, get down. My horse took off, so I gotta kill all these guys first. Speaking of violence. So this is the Xbox One X. And then I'll uh, load up the same section in um, the Series X. And you can see a head-to-head -head comparison. It doesn't look too dark, actually. It looks okay. All uh, right. Oh, I've got a double-handed. I don't have a, I don't have a shield right now. This axe starts to go on fire. See, there's magical abilities and powers. It's very RPG-like. If you shoot at the um, highlighted portions of people's bodies. Um, you can bring them down and then you can finish them off with some I incredibly violent finishing moves, which are also satisfying. A lot of heads get lopped off in this game. Okay, so we're going to carry this king. Um, and where's my horse? Okay. Come on over, horse. Here are some arrows. Oh! I wanted to run over here and get these things. Okay. Pick up my dude. Come here, king. This, see, this doesn't look bad at all. This looks really good. Okay, so put that on. So for those that are just joining us, we are looking at uh, the Xbox One version, Xbox One X version of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Where did my horse go? There it is. I can't take my eyes off the screen. And mount. Let's go. And now, where do we go? We have uh, a kilometer to, to to ride. Nothing's ever close in this game. <laughs> you gotta ride and ride and ride. Uh, there are counter and parry moves. Yes, there are. And um, you can do some really cool things with the shield as well. Some good shield bashing. There's different uh, bows and arrows. Um, that are better in different circumstances. Uh, there are battering rams when you're inside of raids. Um, there's some cool things like the, the uh, when you're cruising along the rivers and, and your uh, boat is going underneath a bridge, they'll take the mast down and, so that they can sneak under an overhang, which is pretty amazing. Uh, there's hunting, of course, and, and picking up all kinds of uh, elements that you'll need to make your weapons more powerful beyond what you initially see, I'll show you some of the weapons that I have right here. So the inventory. Um, so you'll see that uh, 
if you want to upgrade right there, I'm, I'm fully upgrade, but upgraded. But when you take it back to the blacksmith in the town, they will add inventory slots and stuff, um, which is great. So you want to constantly re-engage with your village and the people there and make allies. And then you're also uh, recruiting new allies. And I believe I, I was playing this all before the game is launched, obviously. But I believe that um, what's going to happen is you'll be recruiting uh, sort of a like kind of like Forza, you'll be recruiting because it looked like gamer tags were popping up. You'll be recruiting other people's uh, players, other people's Ivors, or versions of characters or something. I believe I, I didn't have time to double check this, but it looked like there was uh, gamer tags of different players from the online space that you were recruiting, um, some kind of AR incarnation of them. They didn't all look the same or anything like that. So I don't quite know, but it, it did look like they were crafted by somebody else uh i buy digital thank you so much i'm i'm convinced ghost of tsushima helped my anxiety especially the summer months of COVID. yeah it was so gorgeous wasn't it i buy digital and this is too uh but it's amazing how um you know a game can kind of come out and shake everything up which ghost did and it it doesn't totally deflate a balloon like this, but the whole time you're playing Ghost, you're thinking about Assassin's Creed and how this stacks up and compares to Assassin's Creed. And honestly, you don't, I, you, you really kind of have to think that a game like Ghost of Tsushima, the expense of it, the elaborate qualities of it, the am ambition of it, probably wouldn't exist without the success of Assassin's Creed, you know? And I know that Sucker Punch was very concerned that at any moment Ubisoft could announce, a, you know, a samurai version of their franchise. Um, but it was so, such a pleasant, beautiful shock that, uh, you know, this, this game took a hit. There's no two ways about it. I think a lot of people, especially like I'm comparing it, and I'm thinking about my my time with uh, Assassin's Creed or with uh, Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm reflecting on it as I'm playing this. Um, but yeah, it was a phenomenal achievement. I have to say, this looks fantastic. You know, so if you've got an Xbox One X and you're looking for a super fun, dependable, reliable, you know, bountiful, value-packed escapism. I mean. You're, you're going to get an excellent game in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, so there's a little taste of it. That was a very simple part of uh, the mission. Maybe, you know what I'll do is I'll climb up something so you can see. Uh, we can take a look around and we can see the draw distance and all that stuff. Let's see. Let's climb up here. It's too bad it's not daytime. I don't even know where I am. Oh, I don't have the headphones in. Wait a second. Let's hear this a little bit. One second here. Thanks for being here, everybody. I'm loving these live shows. They're super fun to do. A lot of work to get all the little pieces together, but it's a joy. Uh, okay, so let's see. Oh, no, I wanted to climb. Oh, you can slow, slow down time when you're falling. And that's a pretty cool effect when you're falling through the air and you, you uh, uh, shoot an arrow into a bad guy's head as you're falling. Speaking of violence in games. Uh, so Shima was good, however, I didn't see it as, a, as revolutionary or revelatory experience. It was merely a solid game. It had a lot of the same open world annoyances in repetition as Assassin's Creed. That is from my life in the knife trade. My life in the knife trade. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing about games too. Everybody finds their way into and out of them. It's a, it's a unique experience for everybody out there. I think I picked the wrong thing to climb to the top of. Oh, I can. Okay. Can I can I go? Um, and I have to admit, with, uh, with uh, Ghost, it took me a while. Less time, but it took me a while to, uh, like, really fall in love with the game. I put, I put a video up of the moment when I fell in love with uh, Ghost of Tsushima. I put, like, 15 minutes of just straight gameplay where I was still not awesome at the game, uh, but I was on my way. And it just was so amazing. And I wanted to share what that experience was like for me. I wish this was daylight so we could see a little bit further. But still, I mean, this, yes, it runs at 30. Uh, but it's still, you can see far off into the distance. It still looks wonderful. And let's see if I can, where do I dive if I dive from up here? I might not, I might not land there. Let's see. No. 
No, okay. Oh no, okay. <laughs> this guy's got leapers. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll um, I'll fast travel to one of these things here. Well, let's just go right there. Kaboosh! And um, uh, was it laggy, John Boko? I hope it's not laggy. Uh, 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 John O'Brother 03, I'm worried about getting a PS5. I don't know how the online is all going to pan out. Yeah, this is the weirdest launch ever in the history of the game business. Um, okay, so we're up on a up on a super high vantage point. It's pretty damn sweet, right? I know you guys want to check out the Series X, so I'm going to... Um, I'm going to quit out of this because I'm sure that'll uh, confuse the account, so... Um, quit. Okay, and then I'm going to open it up on the Series X. We're going to switch to that. There we go. I've got NBA 2K21 downloading. It's a huge game. It's 100 gigs. Um, okay, so here we go. That might be affecting my internet, by the way. I've had a lot of stuff uh, downloading, but I'm uploading with the show. So let's jump into Valhalla. Um, okay, so we get to do the same mission that we were just on, and, uh, oh, is the audio, what, what do you got, oh, right, it might be, uh, I don't know what the audio is going to be. Hold on, let's see if I can... I didn't have time to adjust the audio in here. I don't I don't know if I can pan it so it sounds good. Honestly, I don't know what I do <laughs> to switch it. But can you hear some audio at least? Maybe I'll turn it up. Oh, you know what I'll do is I'll just turn my music off one second here oh you can okay great um okay you can hear it okay fantastic okay so this is xbox series x you'll you'll see that it's running at 60 frames per second of course we're streaming at 1080p so you're not going to see um you know, like a resolution increase or anything like that, but we should see a little bit more detail. Looks like we're in the same time of day with, with the similar kind of visibility. That was a parry right there. That And I, I've been using... Uh, and this is... Uh, oh my God, there's his head. So there's a lot of that that happens. Um... You'll see that the fluidity is a lot better. All right, so let's call our horse. And let's get our king on the horse. It's still the same game. Oh, come on. I need the I need the icon to pop up one second here. Okay, so pop up right there. Get on there. Horse is running away. <laughs> Okay. Oh, let's see. I can... Uh... Oh, that was my harpoon. Let's see if we can... Okay, I just tripped him up. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Gotcha. So you can, of course, pick up your hunter arrows and stuff. Your arrows. Uh, so there's there's hunter um, bows and there's light bows and there's heavy bows. Dead. Oh, there you go. 
So when you kill somebody, you can come and take it. Okay, so where's my horse? Come on back. Thank you. Let's go. All right, so now we cruise for another kilometer. Let's go for a horse ride, everybody. Are we seeing some... Um, is it choppy? I can't tell how the stream is looking. Is it looking okay? I'm playing on regular difficulty. Uh, that was John Boko asking the question. I'm very powerful, though, because I've been doing some side missions and stuff, and I think I'm in a 20-power uh, level, and I'm 52 or something like that. The stream should be pretty solid. I'm hardwired now, and um, uh, I'm just streaming at 1080p. Uh, I have 300 up, 300 down. Um, eventually, I am going to be looking at trying to figure out some kind of a 4K stream. I'm waiting a bit, though, because I feel like a lot of uh, new gadgets are going to hit the market to kind of best take advantage of these new machines. Great Evil One. You can see a little more fidelity, a little more sparkle even on 1080p, right? You can see that uh, just a lot of details. And I'll climb to the top of the... Uh, I'll climb to the top of the tower again. All right. Can you switch different... Play mode so we can see such as Pathfinder. Uh, still has pop in. Apparently Amazon is delaying some Series X orders till the 31st. Yeah. Yeah, I got a delay. I ordered an extra controller and I don't know when I'm getting that controller for the PlayStation 5. But there was I got a delay notice from them on that. Never seen decapitation in Assassin's Creed mode. 1080p definitely makes a difference when watching you stream on my TV. Right on. That's great. Thank you, I buy Digital. You're an amazing man. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. MassProduce201. Yes, the streams are going to be available. I've, I've been streaming pretty much every day for the last week or so, and I think I'll, I'll do at least another week of of uh, regular streaming because there's so much stuff to talk about, and it it just takes me some time to edit things, and I feel like this, this is a fun way to kind of engage with you guys and show you some of the stuff. I'm definitely going to do another four-hour stream of the PlayStation 5, um, and we can just go through software and, and stuff that I'm allowed to uh, when it arrives, and it should be arriving soon. Oh, okay. So that's Evar. Yes, okay. So we're going to go to... Um, we're going to jump up here. I think that's where I went before. I don't know. We'll just jump up there and we'll see where, see what's going on here. Uh, lucky Cyberpunk got delayed because it would have been even more of a bloated month than it already is, John Boko. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I tweeted last night, huge game is huge. I was talking about this game, obviously. And it just is. It just goes on and on and on. It sprawls. It sprawls. You you see new things. Obviously, it's like a domino effect. You you uh, connect with a person, and then it leads to another part of a mission. And um, you know these little side paths that you go on for a while take hours and uh, or take some time, right? Especially if you want to collect everything. Um, I I killed a. Uh, I'm not gonna say. You, you'll you'll see all of you'll see all of the bounty in here. This is a game to get lost in. That's what Ubi does with these Assassin's Creed games, especially Origins. And I, and honestly, they went to a two at once every two years once they started this new cycle of Assassin's Creed with Origins. And I feel like they pack in like twice the amount of game now into the Assassin's Creed games. They were already enormous, and now they're twice as big. Um, but this is amazing at 60 frames per second. Oh, and you know what? I didn't adjust anything either. I just put the HDMI's into the uh, into the splitter that I have, and uh, and and we just went for it. So let me let me do my my dive off, and then we'll uh, we'll check out a different game here. 
Oof. Gives you vertigo. Well, this he's a very special Viking evil one. He's a part of the uh, the uh, order of the assassin. And they, the way that they introduce all of those elements is really cool in this game as well. It's it's unique. Um. Okay, and he has Batman vision. Okay, it's addictive. I don't want to stop, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to show you guys something else. So, um, let's quit out of here. Oh, I'm going to quit out. I didn't say, but that's okay. I kind of want to play all that again anyways. And um, we're going to bounce to the one. So this is the one. And why don't we check out... Um, I had some ideas. Dirt is Dirt Five fully. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch the music off because the or the sound off because there's gonna be licensed stuff right away. So I'm gonna check out Dirt Five. Let's see if we can. Dirt Five goes up to I think 4K 120 frames per second. I have no way to see that with my gear yet. Um, but this is the One X version of Dirt Five, and then we'll bounce over to the. Um, you can see how long it takes to load. And we'll bounce over to uh, Dirt 5 on... <laughs> you want to see Crimson Skies? <laughs> no, we're going to look at relatively new games that are super enhanced for the uh, Series X. I love that, Louis Arias. <laughs> uh, and, and Vikings have uh, Spider Sense Evil 1. Yes, these are special enhanced Vikings. These are Series X Vikings. Uh, Colin McDonald, hey Vic, what are your thoughts on the Peter Parker face change for Spider-Man Remastered? Ooh, that's loud. One second. Loud in my earballs. Here we go, let's turn that down a bit. Um, is that right? Okay, there we go. So we're going to go in here. Uh, boom. This will pick me up. We played this together the other day on the Series X. It looked incredible. Um, I'm sure this looks really good on the One X. Jonathan Brown, God, I love the Dirt Game. Speaking of Sega, they got to re-release their Rally Series. Yes, they do. Oh, man. Imagine if that became, like, we could play the classic Rally games on this and then, and then something new. Okay, so... Uh, uh, settings. Oh, this might not have any. I might have turned it right because it's all. I love that cloud save thing that they have with here. Yeah, music is off. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, Dirt 5 on the Xbox One X, and it's going to be a cold start on the Series X. You guys saw how long it took to uh, to load up right there. So I'll turn the audio on. So let's continue on the career. And um, oh, let's do some ice racing. And. Oh boy, this is so not snappy. <laughs> we uh, talked about that yesterday, Deplete. Take two is going to buy Codemasters. I think that's. Uh, I like this green one. We're going to go with. I think that would be a pretty awesome thing for both companies, actually. I love Codemasters Ice. racing stuff. It's smooth, flat, and cold, and the only thing between you and the depths of the abyss. This also, is. Uh, great in a soda to make it really crisp. Good point. Ice, friend, and enemy. I Ice think Nolan North doing the talking. Oh, let me put, sweeping corners yeah, you can hear it. Long straights, I guess. Custom built I for think that's Nolan North action. in there. You got to stay okay, here cool. we go. And keep control on a surface with very little grip. Kyle Biller, I haven't really played enough to review it yet. It's been fun. It's been uh, super accessible. I love off-road racing. You know, it's I, I like extreme environment stuff. I like where you have to battle the environment and the other cars. And there's a lot of, like, it encourages you to trade paint and, and uh, you know, obviously earn the un unlockables and the customizing your car and stuff. But it's aggressive and it's silly and it's fun. And I like that about racing games, you know. Like we've had so many excellent uh, simulation racers that really ask you to kind of grip the road and, and uh, take every, every corner perfectly and stuff. It's refreshing when, you know, uh, boosting and uh, uh, drifting around corners is kind of required to, to do well. And uh, I've liked that in rally games in the past, but this is right along 
the lines of the type of game that I like. I like traditional rally games as well, where you don't see the other racers. You're really just racing the clock. Those can be super fun. Um, but I, I much enjoy this kind of rally cross kind of vibe where you're bounce, bouncing off all of your opponents like that. Colin McRae Rally, this is the roots of that. I used to love Colin McRae Rally. And I used to love the rally, uh, rally cross game that Sony made for PlayStation, and then I think DICE made a Rally Cross game as well. A Rally Sport Challenge, is that right? Rally Sport? Loved it. That was a weird angle. That looked like half the car was missing. So this is this is 1X. Looks great. You can see a little bit of aliasing on the... Uh, oops, I was looking at the buildings. You can see a little bit of aliasing on the buildings and stuff in the background. Pop it into, uh, yeah, the um, cockpit looks stronger on the Series X, as you would expect. This is fun. Oh, man. It's still super fun. It's not like last gen sucked, right? Yeah, you can you can completely see the uh, aliasing on that corner. A little bit less so over here. I like that it's so bright like this. Okay, um, that's good. I think what what we're gonna do is we're gonna quit this game. I'm gonna open it up on the uh, and we'll start this exact same race. So I'm gonna quit. Boom, and we're gonna bounce over here that right there and we're going to jump into this is series x now i know they have a very similar front end don't they um let's group by i have so many games on this hard drive here let's do uh dirt five right there let's see how fast this loads up uh frame rate looked like 60 uh, commodore 64 in on xbox one x it will run at 60 on the series x because we're streaming at 60 uh, but it goes up to 120 in 4K if you've got the uh, the means. Uh, P. Mosley, yes, I've got pretty decent internet speeds. I, I John Boko, this is the best iteration of the Xbox UI. Like the, this whole. Uh, oh, I didn't want that music. Oh well, God, I always get burned on the damn light. I'm sure that two seconds of music is going to get a copyright flag. It's insane. Okay, so career. Uh, well, everything looks much sharper. Okay, let's do the ice race. We were just in it. Look at how fast everything is. Holy crap. Let's go. <laughs> it's boom, boom, boom. We're in. Um, let's see how fast it takes to load the game, actually. Oh, you heard nothing? Okay, good. Oh, you know what it is? Um, it's the, the audio is not balanced. So I'll boost it a bit on here, and I'll try to remember. I had it so that there was audio coming in on both sources. And I have to go into a whole other menu on the switcher, and I have to plug it in in a weird way. So I, I, it's, this isn't really the audio challenge here. Okay, so we're racing right away. All right, so look for the aliasing in the background. This looks amazing. Looks great. I can see it on the uh, in OBS, and it still looks great. Uh, yeah. Oh no, I still see a little aliasing on that building. Interesting. Okay. Oh, you can see a little bit more. Uh, just feels like there's just a little more reality on the corners. There's like just a little more detail. Again, it's gonna be tough to kind of make out the difference because they're both streaming at 1080p and 60 frames per second. You guys are probably a better judge at this than I am because I'm actually playing the game, but I don't know if you can see much difference. 
Uh, Winnipeg Gamer, yes, your account just continues on. Uh, achievements are all exactly the same. It was asking if achievements are shared. It's exactly like I, I picked up this game exactly in the same spot that I just did from Dirt 5 on the Xbox One X. This is a hard game to, in a stream, to show off any anything really different at a, in a 1080p stream. Which speaks to the quality of last gen, right? And that is honestly the biggest challenge that uh, the, both Sony and Xbox are probably going to face, you know, over the next several months, is convincing enough people that there's a, 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 a sizable upgrade, you know? I'm really, because I beat Miles Morales on PlayStation 4 Pro, and I'm really looking forward to playing it again on PlayStation 5. That, that's the game I'm, I'm just dying to experience, and uh, I want to I wanna do that head-to-head -head very much as well. Okay, so that was um, Dirt 5. I'll do the same thing. I'll quit out of this. Part of this, I guess, is the experience of... Uh, this is the 1X that I just switched us over to. So let's let's play Madden's not quite ready, so we won't play that yet. It's still downloading. Let's play um what's what else is kind of hot for this launch here? I think I can uh mm. Okay. They're starting to put little logos on stuff. Oh, Watch Dogs. Let's jump into Watch Dogs. Um, okay, this is going to take a little while to download. I'm going to turn the music off just in case there's some licensed here. Okay, here we go. And it's going to be loud, so I'll put it right there. So that's going to take a second. This will be interesting to see how fast Watch Dogs... Oh, it didn't load. What happened? Does it have to update? It might have to update. Yeah. Okay. So it's updating. Um, let's do that right now. Let's see how fast that updates. Wow, the... Uh, I guess the... I'm downloading NBA on the Series X, and that's massive. And I think it's taking a lot of the bandwidth. And my kid is probably on the internet right now. You want to see Jedi Fallen Order on, on both? Absolutely, let's do it. I don't know if it's been optimized... But it ran, I mean, I showed off the Series X version not too long ago. So let's take a look at this. This is the One X. I'm using my uh, custom made in the Xbox, uh, which I love. The, the You're able to custom design your own controller. Microsoft sent me out a code so that I could test that out. And I freaking loved it. Um, and so I made a Batwing controller. So I, I, this is my design. The gray of the suit, the yellow around the, the, uh, the bat emblem, and then the sort of super midnight blue up there uh, and some black accents of course i love this thing but now i'm all about the series x controller which feels better in the hand it's a little bit more grippy there's a little bit uh, better resistance on the triggers but other than that it feels very similar i mean they they feel about the same weight they feel pretty much the same in the hands uh for some reason what what's happening let's try it again it might, it, I, they might need updates or something because the machine is launching. Oh my God, look at how slow my internet is right now. The machine is launching tomorrow and I'm sure all of the devs are trying to make sure that there's compatibility across their stuff. So it's a bit of a weird time right now. So I don't know if everything's going to work. Um, Xbox this year just seems more consumer friendly, more powerful, and just great overall. Yeah, this is not, I think it needs to update, guys. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, um, what else is going to be? I guess I could try Halo. Racing games are you're not really going to see the difference on. I wanted to show you guys Watch Dogs. That's the one. Um, uh, Ori hasn't come out. Yeah, see, it needs an update. Uh, the update, I don't think, has hit. Okay, close. Okay, it's updating.
I'll start Watch Dogs. It's going to be a second here. You know what? Why don't I play it first on Series X? I do game on PC, absolutely. I've got a, um, an Alienware M17 laptop that I do my gaming on PC on. Um, I feel like it, we're edging closer to uh, me having... I've been thinking about this. I think because I'm streaming more, um, I would love to be able to get a dedicated streaming space. I kind of just kludged streaming into where I do my work, which is writing and editing and stuff. Put the camera up there. and I've been figuring stuff out, sort of making stuff on the fly. Um, but I think what I'd like to do is have like a... a, a a dedicated space set up here where I could uh, uh, stream and show off everything in, in as the best resolution possible, you know? Um, and that will mean that I would want to get uh, one of the new cards and, and, you know, take advantage of all the fancy new technologies and stuff like that um, and sort of have some parity across the next-gen consoles that I have. Uh, let's see. Uh, do I like Intel or AMD? I, I like them both. I've had a, a AMD machines and I've had good Intel machines. I've been working with Intel Canada in the last little while. They reached out and they've sent me a couple of laptops to review. Um, but I know that there's some real competition between the two of them, which is honestly a good thing, I think. Um, it keeps everybody honest. But um, I've been super impressed by the horsepower on on super light and thin laptops now. It's mind-blowing to be able to play you know, state-of-the-art games, not in their at the very, very best that they're capable of, but really damn good. And why I love gaming laptops, I've said this in my reviews, is the, especially in the days when I could actually travel, uh, the fact that I could bring my library anywhere with me, and I took one of the laptops, we did one camping trip this summer, and I took one of the laptops that I was reviewing, uh, it was an Acer laptop, I took it camping, and I was you know, I woke up early one morning and it was just quiet on the on the uh, in the in the water where we were, and I I uh, I, I was playing Spider Man Shattered Dimensions <laughs> on this laptop in the middle of nowhere, and I just felt so indulgent. But it was super cool. Um, yeah, it was the Acer Predator laptop that I reviewed. Uh, Hitman Two. I'm waiting for this. So we're, uh, the speeds are picking up here a little bit. Give us a second here. One minute. I feel like if I go to... I I think the idea is uh, boot from cold for Watch Dogs Legion on 1X, because this is part of what I'm showing off, too, is how quickly you get into these experiences. And we'll do the same thing on Series X, and I believe it's enhanced. I think it's all working the way it should now at this point. Uh I'm a massive Batman fan, so my idiot friends got me a Batman what dildo for the, for my 30th birthday. <laughs> Worst gift ever. <laughs> Akavario <laughs> revealing some stuff on the chat today. What console is more interesting right now, PlayStation 5 or Series X? This is from uh, 2005, cool year. I don't have the PlayStation 5 yet. I've been in touch with Sony, and, and one is headed my way, uh, but I haven't spent time with it. Uh, so I can't really respond yet. Um, I think it's it's awesome that there's a brand new Spider-Man game to play on PlayStation 5. I think that was in incredibly smart for... Uh, oh, I'm using the Series X controller to try to control this. Um, but, uh, I mean, I've been freaking loving this machine. Like, it just feels like... It feels like... Because there was so much good software on PlayStation and Xbox last gen... And some of it, some of it ran perfectly, but some of it ran at thirty, or there were some uh, some you know hiccups or issues. And I, these things are going to be so freaking powerful that it's um, it's almost like they're running the games the way that they should, you know, that the way that they should be, the way that the developers envisioned, and honestly, the way that PC players have been playing them. <laughs> And now we're going to get these consoles that are going to be so powerful. I can't, can't wait to play God of War again. I can't wait to play uh, through Days Gone again and The Last of Us games. And uh, It's exciting. I do wish that we had more exciting games that were made just for these machines at launch. Um, but that's coming. And this is a not-so year. Okay. 
uh, pleasure cabbage. Uh, okay, here we go. Kashimoto sort of with me on the gaming laptops. Okay, so we're going to jump in. Let's see how long this takes. Um, I, I just love playing video games, man. Like I've been impressed playing games on iPhone. I've been impressed playing uh, uh, stuff in VR, you know? I, I love the, the, the creative sort of journey and the, and the wonder that developers have, you know? That's why I, I, having had the, this amazing privilege to go and meet so many game makers over the years and to kind of get into their headspace and the way that they talk about their creations as if they're physical, as if they visited them, as if they're really like tangible things that they've built and locations and characters. That's so inspiring, you know? It's, I mean, I was an actor, right? So I have that perspective and, and I've always been a fan of storytelling, always, and escapism and, and to have been granted this access into these uh, people's uh, creative spaces and to got, and have had the opportunity to get to know them and how they work. And it's incredibly inspiring. And so I always see that and I, I see the, uh, the creative ambition and the, and the spark, the, the kind of insanity that, that game makers have around the things that they put out into the world. And I just, I find it really wonderful, you know? So I, I'm less about the hardware, truth be told, and more about the uh, uh, the the adventure that these, these creators take us on. And honestly, like, it's been super fun to get retro in the last few years, too, and, and to remember and reminisce and play lots of classic stuff. Well, this is the Watch Dogs Legion that I remember. I'm just going to make sure I don't have any music on. I honestly haven't seen, because I've been playing other things, I haven't seen, um, okay, oh, okay, good. Watch Dogs running on the Series X yet. Oh, I, I did, but it wasn't the enhanced version of Series X yet. Okay, you can see stuff kind of... The game benefits from all of the digital doodads that are on every screen and stuff anyways, but you can kind of see detail popping in as I'm walking down the street here. You definitely could see it when you're driving... You're going to hear some... Oh, I'll put the audio on. You're going to hear some swears. So, let's see. This is a wonderful game. It's really cool. I, I like It's getting lost, I think, because there's so many things happening right now, but um, it's just, this is a very, very fun game to play. It's like a toy. Like, there's so many... You can play as all these different characters and approach every situation differently... It's a bit busy, and and a little. It, there's some consequences taken out by the fact that you, you, you know, like you just move on to another character and you try it again. Um, but it's really fun. It's really fun at the core. It's just enjoyable to test out the systems of the game and driving's good. I'm bad at it. As we established on my last stream, I think I'm on the right side of the road, which is the wrong side of the road. And you can drive the buses. We we just discovered that on my last go around. I'm gonna just hop out and take over this bus. And everything if it has an A on it, they're auto vehicles, which is cool. So you don't you're not always throwing people out of their cars. Cause you're supposed to be part of the good guys in this game, right? You're not supposed to be You're you're a bit ragtag. You're trying to you're fight. You're fighting for a higher cause here. You're trying to beat back the oppressors, but you're not supposed to be a psycho killer. So there we are. We're in a giant bus. Okay. Looks good, right? This is the One X version of Watch Dogs Legion. Still looks very impressive. I'm gonna get chased by some cops, and let's see where, what happens. <laughs> I'll go by the uh, Sta Roger coffee shop right there. Oh, okay. Let's let's run. That that's gonna that's gonna take take a while to get. 
I just want to play. I mean, this is like a vacation to London, too. That's the other thing. I love this game. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to quit. Quit out. There we go. Quit that. Now we're going to switch to Series X. This is the Series X. Playing on the Series X right now. We're going to pop on uh, Watch Dogs Legion here. Hopefully I don't have to update. Let's see. Um... Where is it? Oh, see all. These are my old pins. I haven't I haven't updated my pins in a long time. Um, this is the external storage that was on my One X. For those that didn't watch the stream the other day, I took it out of my One X and plugged it into my Series X, and all my games were immediately playable. How freaking cool is that? I didn't have to do anything. And in fact, I'd already downloaded some stuff under the internal storage of this so I deleted the duplicates I wish that it had some way to know that there's a duplicate version of a game on there but I thought that was just awesome uh, what's up Ryan Dodson good to see you Vic's character has a fat ass and I mean fat with an F not a PH all right Carl uh, Mr. Brockerock I see the game suffers from the common gameplay trope indestructible trees <laughs> yes Mr. Brockerock Trees are my nemesis. I can't believe there is more Watch Dogs games. I remember the awful delay for the releases the first installment had. Okay, here we go. Let's see how quickly we get into this. I mean, it's that that it's impressive how easy it is to just start playing on this machine. I'm really looking forward to that unboxing and jumping online for the first time experience of the PlayStation 5. Okay, here we go. That is insanely fast comparative. That line is moving insanely fast compared to what the One X was doing. Um, do you expect Windows Mixed Reality with Xbox at some point to compete with PSVR? I think everybody's kind of waiting for the next go-round on VR. Look, look at this. So So it, it must have auto-saved, so I, they put me into a bar. Okay, so this is... Oh, man. This is 1080p, 60 frames per second. Well, I'm streaming at 60 frames per second. I don't know if this is a 60 frames per second stream. I don't think it is. I think it's still 30. But maybe I have a... How do I get to the thing? Oh, it's this. How do I get to, maybe there's a performance, let's see. Display. Off, no. I can tell there's a lot more solidity in the uh, environments though. Oh, that was popping in a little bit. I'm, I'm looking into the distance to see what kind of draw distance pop in stuff. I'm in a um, very quiet electric scooter. Let me turn this volume up. You guys can hear this a bit better. This is a game where like icons are flashing across screens all the time. Seems pretty damn impressive. I'm looking into the distance here to see what's popping in. I can't tell what the frame rate is. I think it's 30. Which this should, especially at 1080p, it should auto go to 60 frames per second. I mean, it does feel smooth. Let me see. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's 30. Vic, the stream is most definitely 30, yeah. There's that bus. Yeah, because you can see it sort of, as I'm panning the camera around, you can kind of see that it's, that's not impressive. That should be, it, this should be a 60 frames per second game on this machine, for sure. The world feels more um, 
tactile, though. There might be a... Um, John, I, you know, like, what I'm thinking is there might be another uh, patch that's coming. Because the game, it it's not out. I mean, yeah, th this version of the game is not out yet, so... Um, so I don't know if this is the fully optimized version. I mean, it still looks great, but yes, it should run at a faster frame rate. Okay, um, let's see if I can plug in Madden and see if there's any, uh, or let's see if there's another thing in here. Okay, oh, I have Like a Dragon as well. Um, I think I'm okay to talk about Like a Dragon. Um, Doom Eternal has been optimi optimized. I've only got battle mode on this. Oh, I can see which ones have been optimized. Here we go. Uh, console types. Here we go. Optimized for... Okay, so... Uh, yeah, it says Watch, Watch Dogs Legion was optimized. Oh, uh, NBA 2K21 just popped in. Why don't we play a second of this? Because I'm, I'm curious to see how this runs. Um... Actually, you know what? No, we're gonna play that tomorrow, because that'll be the that'll be the game that I stream tomorrow. Um, Forza, it's hard with the racing games because Forza looks incredible in 1080p. Or it says that it is. That's a really nice filter. Um, I don't see how No Man's Sky. This was just recently updated. All right, here we go. Let's let's load this up on Series X. I don't know if I'll well, see how fast this goes. I don't know if I have this on the One X. I probably do, but let's just check this out. City of Heroes was awesome. Um. I have not played with uh, Matt Booty or Phil Spencer or Major Nelson, John Boko. I know all those guys. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm always like hustling to get content back out to you guys. So I review this stuff when it's dropping and when I, you know, just pre-release and stuff. The, and those guys are hustling with... Uh, um, you know, months before approvals and, and, you know, sort of launch lineups and stuff like that. And then I think what happens is they get a chance to go, sort of join the community and play with the community a little bit. But I have moved on to, uh, I don't get this, like, I want to play Star Wars Squadrons more, but I can't, I'm not, can't play that right now. I got to play all the other stuff that's happening right now. Unless I stream it. It is crazy how this, let's see Yakuza on both. I don't know if I can I don't know if I can show Yakuza yet. Let me just double check on uh I couldn't the other day, but these things are all um Hold on one sec. That was a previous Yakuza. Um, I'm checking, checking email. Okay, yes, I can. I can stream. Okay, we'll play a little bit of Yakuza. Uh, this looks crazy. 
Oh, it's like a filter across the... Oh, look at that. They added some kind of frost effect. It looks so... It looks like I'm looking through a helmet. It's nuts. I think this is running at 60 frames a second now. This this was just recently updated. I don't see how this wouldn't run in this with the same, especially 1080p. This should run at 60. If it runs ten, at 60 on X on Series X, it should on One X as well. Okay, get out. I, I would like to fly, but my sh my spaceship is broken, and I played this game on PlayStation, so like my, my save games are much further along on that. This looks really good though. This looks so cool. I would love to get up in space or up above the the uh, planet to show it off. Thank you evil one. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you uh, thank you for being here. I think this is kind of helpful, right? Like being able to see these things live and bouncing from game to game like this. There was some weird anti-aliasing pop in when I was just standing still. I think that was the lo the uh, world just loading in. Got to remember it was a tiny team and the game is endless. Like it's it's a universe that you get to explore basically. And everything's random and procedurally uh, generated in this thing. But yes, it was so heavily hyped. It was hyped as the uh, second coming of games, and that did not uh, uh, that did not do this game any favors or the team. Got a plant. My life support systems are at 50. All new games are endless. It does feel like that, doesn't it, Evil One? I mean, this is running really well. It feels like a different game. All right, I want to uh, pop out of here and let's see No Man's Sky over here. And we can also, uh, and then I'll start Yakuza as well if I have No Man's Sky. If I don't, we'll just jump right into, uh... oh, I don't, right, because that was my no Man's Sky was on this drive. It's only on this one. Okay, I do have Yakuza, though. So let's jump into this. I'm going to pop this onto uh, silent. Uh, this channel deserves a million subs. I want this channel to take off. Vic is the OG of this whole video game show genre. Thank you, uh, Patrick Jedi. Thank you for the love. Um, I, I All I can do is just do what I do, and I appreciate you guys being here, you know? Uh, I definitely prefer to make things and uh, just connect with you guys through the content and stuff than to run all over the place and, and do tons and tons of promotion. I like to be producing rather than talking about producing. Question, have you heard anything about the rumored sequel to Sleeping Dogs? I have not. But if it is coming, it's going to be a totally different group of people making it because UFG is no more, sadly. That should not have been the case. That team was amazing. The fact that they made Sleeping Dogs and Mod Nation Heroes as their first two games, like, that's impossible. Okay, so let's see, let's see how this goes. All right, let's see. Um, Can't turn off the music. Uh, 
Okay. Continue. Uh, okay, so this is the Xbox One X. Um, we'll go here. Sure. Okay. Your um, your One X. This is nobody important. Says um, uh, the One X drops frames on Apex. I think they just did do a uh, a big Apex Apex update. There's a big battle scene. Oh, this is cutscene crazy. This is after um, uh, the the dude goes to prison for something he didn't do, and he uh, gets into fights with people there. I've done, I think, just under 20 hours of uh, Valhalla, Mitch. Um, I I like it better than Odyssey. Um, but it's because of the Viking kind of trappings of it. But Odyssey is incredible as well, you know. Uh, I think that's part of it now. It's like you, you can kind of pick your flavor of historical um, storytelling. And you can kind of decide if it's right for you or not. But Valhalla is incredibly impressive. I, I said in my review that I preferred this year Ghost of Tsushima to Valhalla, but they're so they're both so freaking good. Where does Vic broadcast the most? Is it is this his main gig under 60k subs? How does he keep going? I'm confused. Why is this channel ha doesn't have a million subs? <laughs> He's the best, Patrick Jedi. I, I you know we keep growing, we keep building a little bit here and there, and people keep spreading the word about what we do with EP. Uh, and I hear that comment a lot, and I really appreciate it. That's fantastic. Um, but the way that we've also been able to keep rocking and rolling is working with the um, uh, game studios on documentaries and things like that. This year has been hard, though, uh, because we haven't had any ability to get out and, and do external production or very little of it. Um, so this has, been a, this has been a tough year for sure. Uh, but I've all picked up a bunch of new skills and i've just been trying to sort of maintain a regular schedule around all this um and i sure as hell appreciate all the support that you guys give me uh but lots of cool conversations are going on right now um which if things fall into place will be uh exciting as hell to share so um i just you know i i, I try not to worry about you know who's watching or how many people are watching I just, I'm doing what I want to do, and I love what I get to do, and you guys being here is enough to uh, to keep me fired up and to, to keep rocking with all this, and as has been true with EP from the very beginning, the more I do this stuff, the more people kind of pay attention to what we do and what, what is uh, the value of our stuff, and new opportunities keep happening, and that is absolutely the case right now, so um, stay you know, stay positive about what we do and keep supporting us and, and keep sharing it. And uh, more and more folks are are bound to find out uh, about what Electric Playground is. And honestly, like, we were a TV brand, you know, and there's been this whole universe of YouTube brands that have come up um, since we were on television. And there's, I get it, there's a lot of loyalty to those brands. And I'm this TV guy that people associate with TV. And a lot of those folks, I think, that were watching our content really kind of stuck with television. And, uh, y y you know, like, I get the why don't you have more subscribers question a lot or comment a lot. And I get, um, dude, I found you on YouTube. I can't believe that you're still doing this stuff a lot, you know. And so that's, that's just part of our growth. Uh, let's see. I haven't got the five yet, uh, Fabled Hero, so I can't do the head-to-head. -head. I can't wait to do that, though. Okay. Can I skip this? I can. Okay. I should have done that. 
Okay, we, we let's get into some playable elements. This is what you have to contend with with the Yakuza games for sure, right? Like, it's storytelling. Let's go. We want to see the game in action, right? I have not played Teardown. Uh, that is from uh, Cross. Okay, so I'm out of the prison. Hope to see Judgment Day return with you and Tommy, Vic. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, let's see. If anyone wants to watch a good old EP show, I recommend Season 3, Episode 1, All Star Wars. Peter Kokasar. Yeah, lots of good stuff there. Scott's doing well. He's working on a new podcast and um, some new production ideas. I have to catch up with him, and I'm going to have him on the show soon. Um, I've just been dealing with all of these launches. Definitely feels like 15 days later, doesn't it, evil one? Okay, so he meets new people. There's, there's, we, we are not getting a sense of how this performs at all yet, right? <laughs> okay, now let's go to a loading screen. What's a YouTube? Yes, I, I hate all that stuff. I'm not a fan of people just being angry about everything. It's so silly. Skip. That's awesome, Ryan. Thank you for the support. Okay, guys. We want to play now. All right. So this is 1X. And the thing that's different about this game is uh, it's a turn-based... It's a turn-based fighter. So what am I doing? I'm, I'm, uh, am I eating? Why do I have to go to items? Oh, back. Okay, attack, and boom. So it's a turn-based uh, JRPG. It's a, it's, it's like a, an old Final Fantasy game, except it's Yakuza. Uh, okay, so we've got some pretty cool skills. Let's do our tenacious fist. Do it. <laughs> Everything's so over the top in this this franchise. I love it. Oh, I can block those, but I'm I'm out of practice. Okay. Nope. Okay. Um let's do a uh Holy crap, man, Patrick. You're incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, let's see. Here we go. I love that bright pink on the Super Chat, too. It's like, huh? Thank you. That's incredibly kind. Um, okay, so I want to do a... Boom. Tenacious Fist. Here we go. Whoosh. Boof. All right. Pretty celebratory. That's quite fun. This is a very, di Wilden, this is a very different experience than other Yakuza games, which were much more like uh, extrapolations of Streets of Rage or something like that, or Shenmue for sure. This is uh, a lean into the story, and it's a lot of turn-based type of strategy before you're getting into fights and stuff. Okay, so we're going to skip. Let's see if we can get to a point where we're actually walking around, so I think that'll showcase the best way to... Uh, do the comparison between this and the Series X version. All right, come on. Patrick, I'm blown away. That's very kind. Thank you so much. Vic, when you're going to, uh, when are you going to do EP Live again? I missed that show. Jeff Meacham, it's got to be safe, man. I, the last thing I want to do is have everybody inside of a tight space and then somebody gets COVID and, uh, um, yeah, right now in Vancouver, we've just been hit with some new restrictions. There's no gatherings of any kind in a business or personal. Um, so it, it'll be in 2021. I know the school, um, you know, people at the school really miss having EP there. I, I, I've been producing, for those that don't know, uh, EP Live was something that we started last year at the Vancouver Film School. They have a cafe space, a, like uh, on the street, uh, cafe on Hastings Street, downtown Vancouver. And we'd have an audience come in to watch the show, and I'd have guests up on stage, and, and uh, we also did some Skype chats and stuff. 
Uh, it was amazing. And this year, it was really cool because we had started to work with the movie studios across Canada to get us early screening tickets to movies just before they were coming out in theaters. So we'd, we'd finish the show, and these would be the same movies that I was reviewing. We um, uh, leave the cafe and walk to the theater and watch a movie together. So we were starting a movie club, kind of. But then, of course, the... Uh, the, the pandemic had different plans for us and everybody else on this planet. I've, I'm starting to build them up again, What's a YouTube, to, uh, you know, kind of a, a one-man band version of EP Live. I have graphics and things that I want to incorporate in here, but it's... it's uh, um, I, I've got to find it, and OBS has a, a finite amount of spaces of things that I can drop in there. I'm not an OBS master, uh, I've certainly been thinking about Streamlabs and other things as well. Maybe there's something that I can uh, um, look into. Oh, that's interesting. It switched my uh, camera control around. Let's see. It's... Nope. Game settings. Here we go. Camera control. Inverted. Inverted. Oh, I, m I might have just done that when I was futzing around inside there. Okay, so let's go back into the... Uh, all right, let's go back into the... This is, I mean, it runs great. This is the 1X version of Yakuza, uh, Like a Dragon. Um, skills. I can't tell you the frame rate. I guess, I mean, I think it's 30 frames a second. Can you guys look at something and say that's definitively 60 or definitively? Sometimes I can, but I can't right now. I mean, it's, it seems fluid. Maybe it's between 30 and 60. Uh, struggling to keep up with uh, Vic Skips. Oh, on the uh, on the storytelling. Sorry about that. I wanted to show the game moving. It's gorgeous, right? This franchise is really cool. I think it's thirty. Yeah, feels feels like it's not super. Oh, this is the cool thing. You go into an arcade. I love all this stuff. Oh my god. Um, you can play Virtual Fighter Five. That's the thing about all the Yakuza games is that they have all of this inherent value because you can play classic Sega games in them. Um, we're not going to do that. I know I, I want to as well, but we're going to check out the, <laughs> the Series X game. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that's one X of uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Um, Sixty frames at fourteen forty on Series X, then thirty on lower 4K settings on older gen. Thank you, Winnipeg Gamer. Okay, so we're gonna quit this without saving it. And then we're gonna pop over to the Series X, which is this one, okay. And we're gonna go to um, Yakuza, which is down at the bottom. Here we go. Let's see how fast this loads up. Oh, I totally turned the audio off on that. I keep forgetting to pop that audio back on. Okay, here we go. I think it is JS. I watched Digital Foundry's um, uh, backwards compatible stream about uh, PlayStation 5, and they were very impressed with uh, everything that they were throwing at it, which is great. There's no quick resume on PlayStation 5, though. The uncle has Dutch subtitles and extra language package. Okay. Uh, M. Ben, you're, you're repeating that over and over again. Uh, what's a YouTube? I'm probably the only person playing games today that doesn't give a... Uh, an F about frame rates as long as the game runs well. Who cares? I don't think you're the only one. There are just definitely some games that are better suited, right? Um, so, 
why don't we... Oh, it auto-saved. Okay, perfect. So we can skip all of that story stuff and we're going straight to the seat. Now, let's see how quickly this loads up. Hey, Mitch, how are you? Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining EP. You rock, man. How many people are here for the very first time watching this stream for the first time? That would be uh, that would be fascinating to find out. Okay, so this is, I can already tell this looks way better. There's just a lot more. It's like it. It's like the lines are drawn in. It's like you have glasses on all of a sudden, you know? Okay. I don't know if the frame rate is better. Just the details are better. First timer. And Mben is first time as well. And, and Patrick Jedi first time. That's amazing. And Fable Hero, I'm hoping for a Red Dead 1 remaster on the X and five. I'll tell you, I have Red Dead 1 on here and on the, on the Xbox Series X and it looks amazing. Blew me away. That's kind of one of the benefits of the new gen, right? Like they, they do play like all the PS4 games and uh, Xbox has been so aggressive with their backwards compatibility that it's almost like you get remastered versions of some of those games and you just have to pop them in and that, that's amazing. Like frame rate boost and stuff. This is kind of hiccuping a little bit. It's not as fluid as I would have hoped. I don't know if there's a uh, a performance thing. Let's see. Uh, game settings, graphics. Ah, okay. High resolution. Normal. So normal. Might go to 60. There we go. Yeah, you can... F that's 60. Ooh. Yeah, because it's... 1080p. Yeah, holy mackerel. Look at that. Wow. Again, it's like putting glasses on. Yeah, sometimes you can't tell what the frame rate is at until you can. <laughs> then all of a sudden, like, whoa, that's way slicker and and shinier. This is great. So 60 frames per second. There's Club Sega. Fluid. Okay. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into this turn-based battle right now. Um, okay. Let's see if there's one more thing we can end the stream with today. Let's see. What do we have? You guys want to call it out? Um, first stream from Anki Coffee Bean. That's so amazing. So buttery smooth. Wasn't that dope? That's great. I love the, like, sometimes you have to dig into the, the menus to see if there's something you can set. And you go, let's try that. And it, oh, my God. And, you know, I love those kinds of discoveries, right? Especially in this new 4K era that we're in. That's the thing. This is a 1080p stream, I keep saying that, and so you're not really getting the value here. Um, okay, so this is this is my collection on the Series X. You guys want to see NBA 2K, uh, 2K21? Sh shoot, shoot out what you want to take a look at. Ori, I got one for Ori, or 21. Uh, so far, those are the Age of Empires. Is that on here? It's not on here, is it? No. I do have that, though. Red Dead? You guys want to see Red Dead? Ori? Uh, MLB The Show 20? That's not on here. Uh, Doom Eternal? Um, I don't think I downloaded Dur Doom Eternal. I thought I had, but I don't think I have it. 21. We got a bunch of votes for 21. Um, okay, let's check it out. I don't think I have an embargo. One sec. I have to check NBA 2K21. One second here. Um, I mean, the game comes out tonight, right? Pretty much. Is anybody... Is anybody, Somebody wants to see Frogger. Is anybody streaming... NBA 2K21. Oh, thank you, Kashimoto. You guys are the best. We got a lot of votes for NBA. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to turn the music off because that's that's definitely going. I'm going to get hit right away on music. So let me let me just see. Let me just check because um, I don't want to piss anybody off. Give me one second here. NBA 2K21 Series X. No, people are posting vids. Next gen gameplay, first gen, next gen. Yeah, there's some vids up there. I think we're okay. And it's streaming on Twitch. Okay, let's check it out. Thanks, guys. I just don't want to. I don't want to get an angry phone call or something like that. Um, it's it's been a confusing time. I, I know you've heard other reviewers talk about this. It's like stuff is is launching, and you know this is an older game, but it's a, it's been updated for this thing. You can show this, you can't show that. I got Chris uh, Kozark on the stream. Good to see you, and Benno uh, Hevenor. Good to see you. Ooh, Control would be cool. Control hasn't got the next gen update. They pushed that to next year. So, uh, um, we will revisit Control for sure. It's enhanced right away just because of uh, the stuff that's on here. Okay, so finished. Okay, agree. Okay. Um, I've turned off the music, or I've turned off the audio. It's loading quickly, right? What a different world. Wow. Um, should we try my career mode? Totally different front end as well. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that because I'm. I want to. I want to take time to do this. So, um, wow! Holy crap! That looks amazing. That looks so good. Okay, how do I go back? I don't want to do this right now. There's no way to. I'll be this guy. Let's go. Uh, I gotta pick a name. Okay, I'm in this menu. <laughs> <It's> all right. <laughs> uh, shift. Oop. Two uh, K uses a totally different, a totally different setup than. Uh, Xbox. Okay, here we go. I like the D-pad on the new uh, Series X. It's good. Okay. All right. Six five. Going even two. Uh. Solid, continue. Okay. Oh, I have none. Okay. Can I what? I don't have any badges. Back, continue. How do I go? Come on, 2K. I just want to get into the game. Accelerate. What is happening? Show-related badge info. I just want to play. Play. Go forward. What the frack? What do I have to do? Accelerate show-related badge badges. Oh, I have 95 points. I get it. Okay. Uh, standing dunk. 
Okay. Oh, I see. I can go up to the top of... Oh, I see. I'm filling up the meter thing there. Okay. Got you. I understand. I see it. Okay, I'm filling up the... I understand now. I didn't know what I was looking at. They should make that a little bit clearer. Defense, steel, I'm just sort of randomizing. Strength. Okay. I picked the wrong mode. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, driving dunk. Close shot. This is the game I, uh, the mode I want to play. Three point shot. Free throw. Let's get that up there. Okay. Go. Now what? I don't want to reset. Okay. Oh my god. Are you serious? What the fuck do I... What do I press? Let's go. Accelerate. If I press back, is it just to... Okay. All of that is there? Okay. Here we go. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. Get me out of here. Out. That was ridiculous. Okay. Play now. I don't even understand what the hell was happening right there. Okay. Ah! I just want to play the game. <laughs> I was trying not to swear, Drakey Poo. Um, okay. That's... Right, turn off the look at how confusing all of this is unreal okay i don't want any music turn it all off settings settings uh music off oh my god off motion okay There we go. And here we go. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. That looks lovely. Wow. All right, here we go. Oh, there's just all the music is off right now. Okay. Anderson. Oh, hey, Allie. Jimmy Butler wow. You the first oh, my God. He said, quote, I'm a little extra. Holy time. crap. Job. I love to work. Why doesn't everybody do what I do? To this day, I don't understand it. Will I ever? Probably not. Will I overreact? Probably so. Guys, in his chase for greatness, he can't stand. Now, no doubt. He is a grinder. Thanks, Allie. This right, looks ins it's totally insane. Robinson at the two with Butler at the... All right, let's play. Three, Crowder out of bio together down low, and it's Dragic in at the point guard position. And for the Lakers, LeBron and Green, they're manning the backcourt. Kentavious Caldwell Pope out there with Anthony Davis, and it's Howard in at the center position. Where's my guy? Who am I supposed to be on? Now here's Butler. Tight defense on him. Broke that up. Goes out okay. That went off Howard. He had the right idea. Wow. Just couldn't come up with the swipe. You know, fellas, one second. I think this is the gen where the people way. are going to walk by a TV and totally think they're watching a broadcast. Not quite this year, but by next year. 
inside Butler. And some teams get production mostly from their starters. I'm not crazy about this but camera angle. Should be a different story. Yeah, I agree with you, BA. You know, really good teams always are going to rely oh. quite a bit on their reserves. And they do Fell it over. and often and in a lot of different ways. I mean, you look at both of these benches, and I tell you what, they've got firepower on both sides of the basketball in this one. Come on, Braun. Get it in there. And yeah. James on the assist by Davis. That defense has to worry so much about LeBron as a passer that it opens things up for his jump shot. Pass to Adebayo. Back to Dragic. Oh, he got me. Touch off the glass. I want to switch this gameplay camera. So we want to be... Okay, let's see what that looks like. It right to the rim, and no one was there to greet him. Well, this early, they, they want it. They want you to be low so that you can see the detail. I get it, but it's harder to play it that way. Back to James on the wing, Green. No. Get up there. Oh. Ugh. Oh, I love this franchise. Almost two minutes into the first here. Now here's Crowder. Oh! Oh! No good. That was sweet. And coming up empty. And you know, guys, always a tough catch on the lob. Placement and timing have to be close to perfect. Nope. Some good passing, though. For Miami, they've gone one of four to start. Here's Crowder. Oh, you got it. Damn it. Okay. I want to zoom in a bit. Just a bit. Let's see. Okay. Goes. Don't think you're gonna get a better look than that, and it's Butler who makes it possible with an excellent feed. Here's Caldwell Pope. Oh. Pass to Howard. Launches no. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. They get it back. Oh, he tries a three. Oh, come on. And it there it is. They get one to fall. You know, it's not only his size and strength and athleticism but Davis's timing is so special. What do you guys think? He boards it so well. Well, when you watch Anthony Davis play Grant, he just moves like someone only half his size. I can't believe the my career I don't know what the heck I was supposed to do to progress to the story. I, like there was nothing clear about what to, what buttons to press. That was nuts. I'll have to dig into that later. I'll try to have some thoughts on this tomorrow. I think this is what I'm going to be playing tonight. The board. The heat with the lead. Oh! Oh! I love the scramble. God, this looks so good. The Lakers making a switch here. Kuzma's checked in, and Miami. I reviewed Valhalla, and um, I streamed a little bit of it. I I may stream a little bit more, but I'm kind of moving through the games as they're launching. That's why we're doing so much so much live content. But I did stream a little bit of it already, and I've previewed it and I reviewed it. But I got to play the new stuff. Okay. <laughs> My favorite thing to do in a sports game is to hear the announcers talk as I pass between the same two players repeatedly. <laughs> Trevor Leahy, that's awesome. Okay, so that that's a little taste of um, uh, NBA 2K21. I think I'm going to play this later today, and uh, I'll have some thoughts on that this game very soon because, of course, I played uh, the previous gen uh, version a lot. Um, so I'll have some thoughts on that, but so far that looks amazing. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow, same time, 3 o'clock. Uh, with uh, some new content, some new rundown, and uh, something new to stream. So um, definitely come back tomorrow. Uh, thank you all for joining me today on this one. Uh, it's, it's a total blast to make content like this with you guys, and I, I sure appreciate all of your support. And uh, thank you to our super chatters and to the new members and to the folks out there that have just found EP and uh, tuned into this stream for the very first time. It's wonderful to have you. And I feel incredibly grateful. And of course, thank you to all the longtime members and all the longtime subscribers of EP that are tuning into all of this live content. There's a lot more to dig into with Next Gen. I'll have some PlayStation 5 stuff for you very soon. Um, and I'll have a lot more fun content for you very soon. Until then, play forever.